Okay, I'd like to bring the meeting to order. This is the Historic District Commission. <clears throat> the date's March 11th, 2021. The time is 4.23 p.m. Um, this uh, hearing was noticed uh, hearing in the noticed Fairfield City Center on February 26, 2021. 26, 2021. Someone has their, Someone has um, their audio on and it's, audio and it's on and echoing in my ear. Everyone, please mute themselves. Everyone, please mute themselves. Um, <clears throat> the um, alternate designation tonight is Clark Stack Bohan. Um, and I guess we can take uh, the roll call. Starting with Chris. You might have to unmute yourself, you Chris. Have to unmute yourself, Chris. I'll start, Adam. Mark Gravanis, Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you. Chris are you present? I think he's going to call in. Okay. Darren Raymond Darren? Lock, Commissioner. Thank you. Jim Bohan, are you present? So no, this is not. George Clark, are you present? I see Chris, so I know he's here. So absent. Tonight is Rosina Negron, <clears throat> George Clark, Alyssa Stack, and Jim Bohan. And I am Adam Cliver, Commissioner. Okay, sorry for the delay. We'll start um, the first item on the agenda, which is uh, David J. and Elizabeth Ives, 411 Harbor Road, for property located at 411 Harbor Road. <clears throat> the application is for a low dry stack stone wall around previously approved auxiliary parking and B, remove fence on retaining wall. Good afternoon, this is Jack Franzen here. Adam, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Jack. Okay, great, I'm gonna share my screen now. And Can you see the site plan here? Yes. Okay, so um, I'm representing the Ives uh, for this project at 411 Harbor Road. Um, the house has been uh, renovated. The original architect was Charles E. Cutler, who I believe built one other house on Harbor Road, but he's probably best known for the Patagonia building on the, on the uh, Post Road in Westport and uh, Greens Farm School, I believe he did as well. Uh, he was a contemporary of Cameron Clark's. The house sits close to the road and it's a very, very precipitous piece of landscape where the property drops off. So actually the main living floor of the house is down a full story below grade. Uh, so it's what some people would call an upside down house. Uh, earlier, we had an auxiliary parking area approved um, by the commission, <clears throat> and this is where my cursor is right here. And what we're proposing to do is to build a, a low dry stack wall around uh, basically, you know, I guess you'd say 180, 270 degrees, depending on your compass. And the wall's gonna be made of field stone. It's gonna look like this. It's gonna be about eight inches high on the, on the side facing the road and varying height on the down slope because you can see the contours vary. <clears throat> the um, other part of the application is we wanna remove, there's an iron fence that's currently on the second wall. The, the property has already got, um, if you count this, the waterfront, it's got about five different walls because of all the different terraces that you need to cross to get down to the water. 
And um, I'm going to show you a photograph of the uh, Hopefully I can get it. Yeah, so here's the, this is a photograph from several months ago, but this shows the iron fence that's currently on that, that first wall. And it's, it's not required for a guardrail because all the areas next to it are, are grass. So they're not walking areas. And if it was to be a guardrail, you know, the builder said, you know, to me, he said, you know, somebody's going to end up like a shish kebab on this fence sooner or later. It's all got these very sharp spikes on top. So what they would like to do is, is just remove the wall. <clears throat> there'll, there'll be, you know, just grass on the backside of it. And below the wall, there's already landscaping. There's shrubs and uh, perennials below the wall. As you look up from the harbor, uh, you can you can you can see this and you can see it from Harbor Road. I do not think it's original to Charles Cutler. I've never seen any of his works with this type of fence, so I don't think it's um, telling an important story about the house, and it's certainly not making it safer. And that's that's all I have to tell you. If you have any questions, I'd be happy happy to answer them. <clears throat> Thank you, Jack. Art. No questions, Adam. Thank you, Art. Chris, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, great. Thank you for your presentation, Jack. Quick question: um, Can you just review the extent of the of the fence removal again? And also, I only have that one kind of J-shaped dry stack wall being proposed. Is there any others besides that one? No, no, that's the, that where my cursor is, is the only new uh, wall proposed. All the other walls on the property are existing. And, and there's a lot of them. There's one, the one here, which is where the iron fence, which is this section here and this section here, is where the iron fence is. Then there's another terrace wall here there's the big terrace wall at the back of the house that creates the patio. Then there's another wall down by the, um, there's like a little flat lawn down here. And then you go down some stone steps and then finally there's kind of like a sea wall down at the, at the water's edge. Right, thank you. And my, um, my question was just as far as the wrought iron um, railings go, is it just that one section that you, showed in your presentation that's coming out or is there other areas yeah, it's it's, it's uh i'll we'll go back to the photo because we do have some handrails that we were keeping so it's this this section here chris that curves up to the house and then this section that has the jog in it that goes uh, from the driveway to the uh, i guess to the south end of the property and there's no okay, sidewalks thanks. or Walking other than the stairs themselves, there's no, um, there's no guardrail function to this. Okay, thanks very much, Jack. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Darren. No questions. Okay, thanks. And um, I don't think I have any questions. I think I understand it. That that entire. Um, well, the railing is is being removed. Just we're just um, not not next to the house, right? Yes. Where there's yes, that we, giant drop drop off. I, yeah, we do or want to remove right? it here. Yes. Okay. But that's that's all planting bed. In the okay. way the Connecticut the residential code, the 2018 Connecticut code is, if there's grass or plantings next to it, it's not deemed to be. You know, a walkable area. Okay. So and again, if you, if you okay. did, if you were, if you did lose your balance, you'd be impaled on the spikes. So. Okay. Yeah, I don't have any other questions. Thank you, Chad. Thank you. And I didn't receive any letters in favor of this application. I didn't receive any any 
letters opposing this application. So the hearing is closed. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank, thank you. Um, the next uh, item on the on the agenda is Sam Cargo 144 Westway Road for property located at 144 Westway Road in Southport for um, A, new fences, B, new built-in grow with stone base, C, extend bluestone terrace, D, new stone walls, and E, new stone fireplace. I will be recusing myself for this application. I'd like uh, Chris to take over. Chris? Okay. Thank you, um, Adam. So um, who is here to uh, present for this application? Um, Sam, are, are you going to present? He, he I don't have you. He just needs on. Can you guys hear me? Himself. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. I can hear, you can I can hear me. Hear I'm you sorry now, about Sam. that, guys. Yes, I'm Sam Cargill from uh, um, 144 Westway Road. I'm sharing my screen. I hope you can see it. Um, can you see my site plan? Yes, we can. Okay, great. Um, so I'm proposing to um, uh, put up, uh, excuse me, replace uh, the fences, um, a, a new built-in grill with stone base, um, extend bluestone terrace and new stone walls, and a new stove, uh, stone fireplace. Uh, and if you look at this uh, site plan here, it, it gives you a good idea from a drone's perspective exactly what we're trying to do. If you see the uh, fencing that follows the property line here with uh, next to the Rileys on the other way, um, it, there is a little path here that brings people over to Trinity Church, which is an easeway that is in the deed for that property. And it's known as the Episcopal Way. There is a stockade fence here that's been there since we bought the property um, some six years ago. And it's in terrible shape and falling apart. Uh, we're proposing a res uh, uh, replacing that fencing, um, and the neighbors, of course, agree that it should be replaced. Um, how do I get there? Hold on a second. And I'll stick with the overview, sorry. And uh, proposing of putting a drill right here off the back of the house, um, replacing a gas drill that was there. And this is a, the immediate patio from off the kitchen. And here is the lower patio that has always been there as well. We're proposing putting stone walls here to, for sitting on either side, and then there's the fireplace itself. So that's sort of an overview of what we're trying to do, and I could be a little bit more detail here. Um, this is an idea of what the fence section looks like. Um, obviously, it's gonna be a cedar uh, painted fence with a cedar cap, a four by six post, um, and it would look a, a hell of a lot better than what we've got now. Here's a view of what the grill will look like right off the back, back of the house here. Um, and here would be the fireplace and the sitting area that'll be added to the lower patio. And to give you a better view of what it looked like off the back of the house, um, here is an eye showing the new fence, the grill, and the fireplace and sitting area. Um, it is definitely an improvement. Uh, the house was um, at a major renovation in 2016, um, and this was some work that we just postponed and didn't follow through with, but now we're back to, um, to the historic uh, to get your view on things. Okay, great, thanks. Thanks, Mr. Cargill. Um, let's see, Art, do you have any questions or comments? Um, no, Chris, uh, I think it looks great. Thank you. Um, uh, let's see.
Karen. Hi, just one quick question. How much of this is actually visible from the road? The fencing um, or the nothing is visible in the backyard, um, but the fencing, you'll see part of the fencing in front of uh, my house. You see where the property line is in the front of the house. It's right yeah. there where it starts. It's actually okay. quite an eyesore of what it looks like now. Uh, it'll be quite an improvement to be a, a white cedar uh, fence. So the the fireplace and the seating area that, that's not visible from the road. It is not. Okay. All right. So really, we're the fence is the the main thing that we can see from and the, the road. And and the fencing um, will be obviously a great improvement for those people that choose to go to Trinity Church on Sunday morning, <laughs> walking down that. So we're, we're gonna have a bunch of happy Episcopalians, so. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, Darren. Um, Jim Bohan, are you here? Yes, here, uh, no questions. Thank you very much, Sam. You're welcome. Okay, and are there any other commissioners here um, on this application? Okay, I have no questions. Uh, the hearing is now closed. Thanks, Chris. I and I didn't, just for the record, did not get any letters uh, in favor of this application. I didn't get any letters uh, opposing this application. And also for the record, Jim Bohan has arrived. Not sure exactly when you came, Jim, but good to see you. Sorry for being and late. The next item on the agenda. It's okay. Sorry for being late. Um, next item. was acting up. Okay. <laughs> next item on the agenda is uh, the Pequot Yacht Club, 647 Harbor Road in Southport for property located at 647 Harbor Road in Southport. And the application is for a replaced second floor porch guardrail with new guardrail. Chairman Cliver, this is Chris Smith, the uh, commodore of Pequot Yacht Club. May I just say a, a, a word or two? Of course. Thank you. I just wanted to, you know, thank the commission and apologize for, we have two submissions today. We'll have more in the future, all, re all related to storm repairs. And I, I appreciate your patience with this. You know, Pequot Yacht Club is respectful and proud to be part of the historic Southport. We are intent on making repairs compliant with the commission's wishes. Uh, additionally, we're focused on the safety and the interest of our staff, the members and the many communities, community members who uh, who don't who come to visit uh, uh, every year. Uh, and, you know, we stand by to uh, to support your uh, uh, your vote and to uh, answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chris. This is Bob and Azarm. I'm actually uh, the chairman of the House Committee who is going to be presenting uh, the application for the railing. Um, uh, I have uh, Maria Baptista with us who will be doing the screen presentation. Um, so, as uh, uh, those of you who were here last uh, month uh, know, we presented a railing and um, uh, there, there were there were definitely issues that came up regarding the railing, and we took all of those uh, comments and issues back with us, and we went back to the drawing board, and um, we um, uh, decided to uh, improve, um, change the material that was being proposed, which was um, a stainless steel, uh, and now we're proposing wood, uh, and part of it is actually wood clad, uh, and also. Um, uh, you can see at the bottom of that screen that Maria just had, um, excuse me, where um, last uh, month's uh, railing, the proposal that we had. Uh, and so um, uh, we scrapped that and we went back to the drawing board and now we would like to present um, uh, this uh, railing in uh, wood uh, and part of it wood clad. Uh, for a number of reasons. Um, one is, unfortunately, the height has to be 42 inches because of the safety uh, of the railing. This is actually a guardrail. Um, and also, there are some structural issues in order to try to keep the design to as close of the, 
uh, as close to what was there originally, um, we have to have some metal um, uh, posts that are going to be clad with wood uh, because um, on the two uh, sides, uh, there's actually the spacing is not uh, that uh, that much, uh, and they line up with the columns uh, below it. But um, the um, side that actually faces the water, um, there is approximately a 15 foot span, and therefore uh, structurally uh, it required um, uh, some uh, metal posts um, uh, in order for um, uh, the uh, rail post to line up with the columns below and not have additional posts up above and to match uh, as much as possible what we had previously. Um, the, uh, th there are a few things that we had to um, actually go with uh, as far as safety is concerned. Um, we had to make sure that the height of the railing was uh, meeting um, the, the current codes, which is 42 inches. Um, the previous railing was 30 inches high. Um, we had to make sure that the opening uh, of the uh, railing pieces was no greater than, in fact, less than four inches. Uh, and we also had to make sure that the span uh, complied with a strength. Um, so th that is what we um, took into account and um, and the comments from last month, and we came up with this design that we would like to propose. Um, I'd like to open it up to uh, some questions now, if there okay. are any. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, um, <clears throat> Jim, do you have any questions? Jim, do you have any questions? No questions. Thank no you. No questions. Thank you. Darren, questions? Darren, questions? Um, so on sheet A102, there's a terrible echo. There's a terrible uh, echo. I, uh, Art, Art I, think, I think you need to mute yourself, Art. Thank you. Um, so looking at the railing, it seems that the side view, there's there's four sections and then a post, four sections and then a post. And then on the rear view, there's five sections and a post. Is there a reason for that? Um, I'm sorry. I'm saying. Oh, um, you, you mean the um, the interior design? I see. yes. Um, interior. Sorry, the interior yes. design. Yes, um, that is actually um, what we had to come up with to um, uh, somewhat uh, go with what was originally there, but also to get the four inch spaces within the 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 railing uh, structure sections between the columns themselves. Uh, if we had. Uh, expanded or contracted anymore the the, um, the spacing and um, um, well, what's the other word I'm looking for um, the symmetry uh, would be would be off. Okay, and then just a, just one more question. Um, it, I still I see a, a rail along the top of the interior and a rail along the bottom of those square sections. Um, yes. Did you play with um, dimensions to see if you could blow those interior sections up to get rid of those rails? Um, those rails are actually serving two purposes. One is um, those are actually going to be metal bars uh, that are going to be spanning across um, and uh, work structurally, and then they will be clad uh, with wood. Um, and the other was that if we had extended the actual a grid that you see in the middle, then the spacing of uh, the, the, we could not meet with the four inch uh, or less than four inch spacing that we were trying to mimic. Okay. That's all my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Darren. Uh, Chris. Hi. Hi. Thank you for your application and your presentation. Um, I'm a little bit. Um, confused on the, the construction of the railing itself. So you talk about some metal components that are clad in wood, but I can't tell from the application which ones those are versus which ones are just wood and um, what, for example, what the rail is made out of and what the, the post caps are made out of. Is there a detail for any of that? Um, well, actually, um, 
everything as far as visually goes, everything is going to be wood and it's going to be painted white um, as the um, the previous rail was. Uh, so uh, the metal parts, there's two by two um, metal uh, posts going up uh, within the posts themselves. So, um, and then the top rail and the bottom rail are going to be one by one. Um, uh, pieces of metal that are going to connect to the to the posts uh, and uh, bolt it on each other, and then but everything as far as visual goes, everything is going to be uh, covered with wood. The interior um, portions are going to be a solid uh, wood material, and we're looking at a hardwood right now. The actual type of wood um, has not been determined right now, but it is going to be hopefully a hardwood that will be painted. I'm sorry, does that answer your question adequately? Um, no, um, it, that's helpful. But so the, the rails themselves, you said there's a one by one piece of metal and then it's clad with wood. Just the top and the bottom straight portions, not the center uh, design pieces. Those are 100% wood pieces. Right, so the, yeah, the top and bottom rail are like one by one pieces of aluminum and then you're wrapping that with the with wood steel. Yes, that's correct. And then there's 2 by 2 sections um, uh, underneath the, um, the actual posts that are there and those will be clad uh, with wood that will um, make them appear like they're 4 by 4. Right, those are for the those are for the posts. And then Correct. my other question was, and I think this came up on the last application, the um the portico, which is on the um over the, the main entrance, which is facing the lawn, uh, yes. is not is not scheduled to be changed at all, right? That's gonna remain as is. Well, actually, thank you for bringing that up. We are actually planning on changing that um, uh, in order to um, make it similar to this one, uh, because we do understand that the other one, even though it is not a safety issue on that side, because no one can get on that actual porch, uh, we do uh, we would like it to match this uh, when this is done. Uh, but um, uh, because of the budgeting and because of the timing, um, we wanted to go ahead and um, uh, and work on this railing, uh, and then we will be coming back to you to uh, get the appropriateness for uh, the side porch there. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. And then I guess also I'm just <laughs> assuming that the the cupola and the other items from the last application are not part of this application. That's correct. We decided because uh, we heard you on the cupola and uh, we decided that what we, what we should do is um, uh, study uh, the uh, actual design of what was there existing and try to match that as much as possible. So uh, we're going back to uh, finding pictures. Uh, I believe there's some drone footage that we're going to be looking at to try to get it um, as close as possible to the original. And we will be submitting that later on in the year as well. Oh, okay, thank you very much for your presentation. I'm, I don't have any further questions. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Chris. Art. Thanks, Chris. Art. Um, Bob, and thank you. Um, the only question I have is um, just to, if someone's looking at um, uh, the railing, either from the parking lot or even um, from Harbor Road, um, just a, a casual observer, um, would they basically be seeing something that um, looks almost identical to what was there before the uh, um, the damage? Um, are there, um, there's, are there, there's, I'm sorry, if they're I'm looking, sorry, if they're at, looking it at it circle from the right circle now, right now, um, they are um, going to see a difference see between a difference the side between porch there the side and what this is. And what but this as soon is. as we but go as as ahead and change the side porch, I don't think that don't anyone's going to know that the railing has been changed. 
Okay, thank you. That, that's, a, that's probably a better way. Um, I would have rephrased the question, but uh, thank you for that answer, Bauman. Good job. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Art. Can you make just make sure? Yeah, thanks. Um, Bauman, I think the the, um, the this uh, this railing design is is much better than what you came to us with originally. Um, and um, uh, you know, so I, I don't have any issues with it. Um, what I do have an issue with is the fact that the club has taken the, the existing railings down before getting approval. I'm not sure what's going on there, but that's assuming you're going to get this passed. Um, can you tell me why that why that happened? Oh, thank you. I, uh, that. Uh... Maybe completely the uh, my uh, fault or and the roofer's fault because we did get uh, approval to replace the deck uh, and the membrane, and so mm -hmm. um, the roofer went in there, um, did uh, remove all the decking and remove the membrane, and inst um, and then uh, in that process um, they found the um, the railing and the post that the railing were on. And the rot that was underneath uh, all of that, the membrane was leaking quite a bit, uh, and um, uh, 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 totally uh, did not realize that um, uh, they should not have taken the railing down without um, approval from HDC. We thought it was just part of the process of the decking and the membrane, and everything had to come out in order to do that. Okay, I was surprised to see it off. <clears throat> so. So my apologies for that. I did the, being a tender foot well, at this. If, if this, I mean, if for some reason this doesn't get approved tonight, which I, I, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't, but if it didn't, it'd be, it'd be a um, uncomfortable situation for the out club. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and for the historic district commission. So um, anyway, um, I just want to say something about the cupola too. There's, you, you have all the pieces for the cupola to recreate it. Yes. Um, right there in the, you know, in, in the uh, parking lot. I've seen it, including um, the finials that, that that were original to the to the to the cupola, and the base is still there. So, um, if you wanted to recreate it, I, I, I bet you, you could pretty easily. Yeah, that, you know? that's that's our goal, Adam. Um, we will be, um, but we just did not have the bandwidth to devote uh, to the cupola, especially uh, oh, since all of this had to, yeah. Of course, it's so we will, and all that, and you have other things to, to deal with. Uh, well, um, and I we understand. definitely will be uh, coming um, to you with uh, the new design to the um, uh, to the commission with the new design and the cupola um, sometime during the summer. Great. Okay. I don't have any other questions or comments. Um, I didn't receive I, any I, letters. I, in, in, sorry. Does someone else um, have a, a question? Um, yeah. I'm, this, this is Chris, if I may. Just um, Adam, to your point on the railing uh, being removed, I thought, and maybe I'm wrong about this, but I thought we specifically did not include or approve the decking last time because it was an integral part of the railing installation. So I was surprised to see that rail come down and the decking work take place as well. They received a repair order to replace the deck um, so, you know, it was, it, it, it was, um, it wasn't apparent to me that they were going to take down the posts. Obviously, um, and didn't intend to take down the posts. So, um, I'm not sure what happened there. The, the, the intent was that they were to just do the deck in kind. Right. So, right. Is that it? Okay. Thank you. Um, so, I did not receive any letters in favor of the application. I didn't receive any letters opposing the application. So, um, the hearing is closed. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is Hardy and Jennifer Royal, 720 Old Post Road in Fairfield for property located at 720 Old Post Road in Fairfield. And the application is for a new 16 by 38 in ground fiberglass pool with granite patio fencing and lighting. Yes, hi, this is David May from Outdoor Design. 
Uh, I just uh, am working with uh, Marquee Pool uh, for the installation of uh, the pool, the uh, patio decking, the uh, the fencing, the um, landscape lighting, and the landscape uh, landscape plants around the property. Um, we are uh, okay. Here we go. Um, we are installing uh, behind the uh, the the house and off, uh, as you can see, behind the uh, the driveway. Um, can you can you see all this? And yeah. So uh, okay, great. And then I just, can, um, I just, can I just can I just um, interrupt for one second? Sure. Um, I'll let you I'll let you um, present your application, but I, I missed. Uh, the other application for Pequot Yacht Club that just came to my attention. So, oh, okay, sorry. Um, I just I just want to let them know that that they can go. We're just going to switch it up a little bit, and you can okay. continue your your presentation. I'll go back to Pequot after this. Okay, and I apologize. Okay. All set. Yep. Go ahead. Thanks. Oh, okay. Yep. And so the uh, installation of the pool uh, is shown here behind the the house structure. Uh, the um, fencing will go uh, around the perimeter um, of the of the property with uh, security gates um, close to the driveway and on the um, uh, side left side of the house. Um, all of the um, the masonry uh, decking will be uh, contained and at ground level so that it will not be seen from um the post road or sidewalks um and the uh the fencing will be um uh hidden by uh appropriate height uh landscaping to cover up uh any of the uh any of the fence that is shown uh, on the corner that is in view of the uh the road and uh, adjacent sidewalk Uh, here is just uh, some of the samples of the uh, materials that we are proposing. Uh, the pool fencing is uh, uh, black aluminum uh, fencing. Um, that's 54 inch for a pool code. And then uh, the um, it has the little um, diagram of uh, the spacing and the style. Uh, the stonework is going to be a light gray um uh granite with a one foot uh bluestone pool coping and if you can move on to the next one uh plantings will be uh skip laurel uh to hide the um the height of the fence uh and will go along the perimeter of uh the driveway and which is the portion that will be in view of the street. And then the lighting will just be contained within the, um, the pool area itself behind the house uh, with all fixtures being lower than the fence, thus being hidden by the landscaping. And um, so I take any questions now? Okay, thank you, Art. Art Gravanis, might have to unmute yourself. Um, I apologize. I, I'm, I'm... It just hit something and my uh, my screen went blank. So um, I have no questions. I apologize.
It looks like we may have lost Adam. I oh, here he comes. Adam, you there? Adam, can are you there? I don't know what happened. I can hear you now, Adam. Um, I don't know if, if I lost internet. I think I may have lost internet. Didn't didn't appear to be, but is um, who's presenting again? It was the full four seven twenty old post road. Yeah, who was presenting? Do you remember? Marquee pools, I believe. The, yeah, I just wanted to remember his name. The presentation ended and, and Arthur has had his comments and we haven't heard from any other commissioners yet. Did Art even comment? Because I didn't I didn't get any of his comments. Um I, I lost I lost uh Adam, I lost the sound, so um, I apologize, right. but I did not have time. no questions from Art. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Hang on one second. I have to get the. Um... Adam, are you speaking? I, I, I just lost all the audio. Yeah, we we sort of crashed there for a second, and it came back. It my my connection okay. failed. I think it was on my end. This is the first. Uh... Okay, I'm all second. So hang on a second. Let me just do this again.
Sorry, Chris, any questions? Hi, yeah, thanks, Adam. Just a little question on the lighting. Um, it looks as though it, it may not be visible from a public way, but it, there is some up lighting and there is some lighting that's taller than what we typically approve. Any other response to that from the presenter? I think you are um, still muted. Okay. So just uh, just to follow up on that, I mean, I think you can see, you know, around both sides of the house from the post road to the pool area. And I, I think you'd be able to see some of those um, those kind of light posts. <clears throat> the tiki torches? Yeah, and there's also some up lights that, that light the uh, trees. Question? Yeah, can, can you just tell them that with the existing landscaping that's in the front of the house, there's a, a very large... Um, I cannot see. Um, can, can, can you... Um, I, can, I, yeah. I can't unmute. It won't... It won't... No, you're 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 on mute now. Oh, I am. You can hear your yes, loud and can you? Oh, good. I'm sorry. Can you um, just from identify Lulu. yourself, please? Yeah, okay. I'm sorry. It's Lulu from Marquee Pools. How are you? Good. We just tell them. I can't unmute. Can, can you hear? Can, can see if they can hear Dave? Yeah, can you hear Dave May? We lost Dave May's audio, but we have him on a cell phone to explain the lighting. Okay, he's he's just muted. It just shows he can't unmute himself. Yeah, I, I I've been trying. So okay. Sorry for the technical difficulties we're having tonight. I mean, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. So you are you going so, through the um, marquee the, pool? Uh, yeah. So the the lighting, um, yes, uh, there is. Um, it's about forty eight inches tall at the installed height. Um, for those tiki torches, um, the side of the house, if you're standing in the street uh, to the left, there is large landscaping that exists there that um, would definitely um, block the view of the backyard. Did they get that? Chris? Can you hear that? I I did hear that. Thanks. Okay, we got a lot of items on the agenda, so we got to keep things moving. Got any other questions? Sorry. Or comments? Or? Uh, no, that that's it. Thank you. Okay, Darren, any questions? Yeah, no just questions. one. Oh. I just have one quick question. Um, I'm a little bit confused what's actually visible from, from the street. Is it just the fencing? Uh, yes, correct. Okay. Thank you. That was my only question. Uh, Jim. Um, how tall is that fencing? It's uh, pool code fencing, which is 54 inches. 
so the landscaping I would um, get at least uh, the minimum height to cover the entire uh, height of the fence. Um. No further questions. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. <clears throat> so the the intention is that this head, this this um, like if this was a, a fence that was going to be exposed, we probably wouldn't um be that excited about it. But the intention is to have it screened with with the hedge, hundred percent. Okay. And um. I think we may, may make a stipulation that that is the case that it's going to be screened entirely by evergreen plantings. Um, so it can't be seen. And you're okay with that? Correct. Okay. And can you just point out how, the, how many light fixtures you have the, the path lighting? Maybe if you could just zoom into this. How do I do that? <laughs> Can you just click on it and use the mouse wheel? No. Um, control, control zoom. Oh, here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I believe there's three path lights and the uh, tiki lights, there's one, two, three, four, five, there's seven. So in the tiki, the tiki lights, are they, um, how are they installed? Uh, they are low voltage. Um, they have a uh, three watt lamp that shines uh, below and then a uh, fuel container on top for citronella oil. Okay, so they're they're definitely. Um, uh, I guess my my question is, are they permanent? It sounds like they're, they're like a, they're installed similar to a light fixture would be. Are they set in concrete or? No, 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 no. They base? Uh, have what's they're, they're um, pressed in with a stake, um, so they okay. are definitely uh, removable and. Um, yes. There are wires running to them. There is wire running to a low voltage wire. Okay, this is the first time we've had tiki torches that are wire tiki torches come come by the commission. So it's it's kind of a, an unknown area. Um, I, I, I okay. given the thought that the height of them and stuff, I'm not I'm not sure how we're going to talk about it and see how we feel. But it's still questionable. Okay. And then is there are there uplighting? Is there uplighting as well? I mean, I saw some uplighting fixtures. It looks like. Outside the pool, you have there's, three, maybe. Um, there's three up lights okay. that are um, behind the um, the fencing in between the evergreen hedge and the fencing. There's uh, three dogwoods mm -hmm. that are going to be planted there, and, and, and the uh, lighting will um, highlight the dogwoods. <clears throat> okay, in in our our um, our guidebook that that. Uh, you know, says what we find appropriate and inappropriate. Uplighting is 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 not appropriate. We don't we basically don't allow uplighting to trees, um, as it creates a lot of illumination in 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 the historic district. If everyone was uplighting their trees, it would you know everything would be it would be a different. Um, different Even if know, it was different environment, a different. So, uh, I, I, it would have a yeah, just it would have a big effect on the on the historic district if we started allowing everyone to have uplighting in the trees. I, it's, I think it's great to uplight trees in general, but in the districts, it's it's um, something that we frown upon. So um, yeah, and, you know, uplighting on trees and on on homes and stuff that sort of stuff is is something we don't we don't like. So. Um, 
So I'm not sure how we're going to handle that in, in terms of, um, um, you know, we vote on this because it's not really broken out. It's just lighting in general. So we may have to deny the lighting without prejudice. And then you have to come back um, with a revised lighting schedule. Okay. Um, or we could, we could specify certain lights that, that uh, uh, you know, not be included, but we'll have to talk about that. Um, yeah. Other than that, I don't, I don't have any other comments or questions. Okay. Um, I did not receive any letters uh, in favor of this application. I didn't receive any letters opposing this application. So the hearing's closed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to return to item four, Pequot Yacht Club, 647 Harbor Road in Southport, for property located at 647 Harbor Road in, in Southport. And the application is for a new brick entry piers with small section of solid board fencing, stone apron, and one way entrance into parking lot, including new plantings along Harbor Road. <clears throat> Hi everyone, I'm Mike Mitchell, I'm a landscape architect with Eckerson Design Associates, and I'll be presenting on behalf of the Pequot Yacht Club this evening. So our proposal is to make a permanent one-way entrance. Um, I'm gonna start with existing photos. We've, um, as part of a prior project that the Yacht Club undertook, uh, I believe previously this, this past year, um, they had to do some work to their gasoline fillers on site. So. As part of that project, they had to create a temporary entrance into their parking lot off Harbor Road, which you can see from this first picture here. So you can see the gasoline filler air intake and exhaust and the concrete bollards that are here. So we were asked to um, take a look at this project and see if there is a way to address this and possibly improve uh, the user experience within the club, as well as some uh, safety issues uh, related to uh, parking and as well as um, the pedestrian vehicular circulation. So our proposal is for a dedicated one-way entrance off of Harbor Road in this temporary entrance location, which you can see from the site plan. So here's Harbor Road and, and the junior building. Um, so we're proposing a 15 foot wide one-way entrance into the club. Um, and this one-way entrance is an elevation you can see it's um, it's flanked by two entry piers, and those entry piers are um, at this time considered to be brick to match the junior building um, with a, a stone cap and also a simple logo uh, stone etched panel on both piers uh, to signify the lettering for the club. Um, flanking both sides of, of that, we also have um, some planting, so we've got some evergreen hedging on both sides of the piers. And then in front of that, we have privet hedging, which matches what's what's existing right now. So one of the things we think this, this helps with, like I said, is kind of the user experience of the club. It's, um, um, you know, having their their entrance now off the of Harbor Road is a one, it's a it, it's two way. So when they come around the backside of the junior building, there's two way traffic. So you know, we think that having a, a one-way entrance in and a, a one-way entrance out kind of solves a lot of their um, conflicts internally within the project site. Um, and in future projects, I think they're going to address the seawall, so that actually helps them too with uh, future construction. So, um, as as far as sight lines go, it's definitely a much easier um, place to exit the club with the existing. Um, location that's the one way or that's the two way. So um, it also benefits the neighbor across the street. I believe her name is Ellen. So you know, people coming out of the club, um, you know, they're they're exiting more on the commercial end. People coming in, she won't have to worry about headlights into her into her front yard. Like I said, I'll go back to the photo so you can see here, this is the existing temporary entrance and our proposal is to make that a one-way permanent entrance in. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to address them. Thank you. Uh, Jim, do you have any questions? Yeah, so, so this is an entrance. So 
your photograph shows headlights of a, of a pickup truck coming out, but once this is done, we will only see tail lights from Harbor Road at that entrance. Is that correct? Exactly. So, so right now okay. this is just a temporary um, condition yeah, right, right. due to the construction. Thank you. Right. Thank you. No other questions. Thank you, Jim. Darren. No questions. Chris? Thank you. So the uh, the existing um, entryway is going to be changed to a uh, one way only as well. It'll be a one way out. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. No, wait, wait, excuse me, Art. Did you just say one way out? One way out. Jim, you got to wait your turn, okay? Okay. Sorry, I'll get back in. Art? Uh, nothing for me. Uh, thank you, Adam. Okay. okay. Um, Jim, do you have any? Do you have another question, Jim? Yeah, well, I, I, I thought I heard Mike say one way out. I thought it was one way in. Well, this would be the, the, the temporary construction entrance that has our proposed piers. This would be a one way right. in, and then the circulation right. would happen internally behind the junior building, and then a one way out at the existing entrance and exit to the club. The one way in between the junior yacht club and the main yacht club. Yeah, this is this is a one way entrance in. So cars right. turning in from from either direction down Harbor Road would come in this way, circulate right. back behind the junior building, and come out as the existing. Okay. Um, Entrance and exit. Right. Okay. So once again, no, we would never see headlights coming out of this this entrance under discussion. Okay. Thank you. That's correct. Yep. Okay. Thanks, Jim. Um, just one question about the how the um, the detail, you know, the transition onto the street. How that how that's going to work. Right, so, so there's right now we existing have a bluestone curb, I think. That's right. Right now there's an, an existing bluestone curb that's been pulled up for that construction that's happened um, previously. Um, so what we're going to propose is that that curb be reinstalled with the minimum threshold to still convey the stormwater down Harbor Road. Um, so there will be a, a, a transition lift there from, from the existing asphalt to, um, to inside the club. And then that, that apron? So the apron right now is proposed as a reclaimed stone apron. So you know what we thought would be a, a nice detail is that existing bluestone to carry that through and turn it down on its side. So you know there's some sources out there for existing um, reclaimed stone that's been pulled up as part of roadway projects that we thought would make it um, a little bit more um, ornamental entrance into the club. So it'll be it'll be bluestone, you think? Is what you're saying? I think so. Okay. Well, we need to know what 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 kind of stone you want to put in there. If it's because um, if you say blue stone, but, then it turns into granite or something, some other material, then you know that'd be a problem. Sure. I think. I mean, you know, really, it's it's, it's those two options. It's either blue stone or it's granite. That's really like the only stone that's appropriate, probably for that location. Yeah. So blue. So it's going to be blue stone. That's correct. Okay. All right. I don't have any other questions. Um, I did not receive any any letters in, in favor of this application, and I did not receive any letters opposing this application. So the hearing is closed. Thank you. Thank you. And sorry for missing you on the agenda. No problem. Um, next item on the agenda, item six, is uh, Gerald D. and Gabrielle Berto. 494 Harbor Road in South Fort for property located at 494 Harbor Road in South Fort and the application is for A, entrance gate fencing along Harbor Road, B, realign bluestone path from porch to side entrance, C, removal of wild, uh, welded wire mesh within hedges on property, D, removal of fence, driveway, gate, and parking courtyard, E, install new picket fence along Rose Hill and into parking courtyard, 
F three line gravel parking courtyard and add wires to a metal edge to hold gravel. G add stone apron between gravel parking courtyard and existing asphalt driveway and H new bluestone steps existing bluestone landing. And Christina made it. You're, you need to unmute though. <laughs> Let me try this way. Is that better? There you go. There you go. Okay. Yep. Okay, great. Um, I, my name is Christina Gates. I'm the landscape architect representing uh, Gabby and Jerry Birdo at their home at 494 um, Harbor Road. Um, I'm going to attempt a screen share, which I haven't been successful. So I just hit this share button, right, Adam? Yes. Okay. And then find so the screen, share the just screen. say screen. Share your screen. And this, okay, you it says connecting. Navigate and then through. your entire screen. Okay. Share. Yep. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Nope, you share, share me. Oh my God, with all the technical difficulties today, this is such a relief. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, okay. Um, okay. So let me start. Um, you just outlined the items that we are proposing for improvements at this home. Um, just to give you a little bit of background, I'm sure you've familiarized yourself with the application, but this is the site plan. Um, and our first item on the site plan um, is an entrance gate. Um, if you probably saw these photos of the original home way back when, it had a fence that wrapped um, from Harbor along um, Rose Hill Road and it has since been removed and there's really just a small um, gate here in the front. So we are proposing, I'm trying to zoom in, um, to put in a new gate and um, two sections flanking that gate on either side. Um, these are all existing photos, I'll scroll back. Sorry, I don't wanna make you nauseous. This is the gate design. Um, that will go here, and I tried to scale it with the house so you could kind of get a sense of um, the length of it. It's about 10 feet on either side, and um, the gate would be a little bit taller than it is now, and it's a simple lattice uh, style wood picket gate, um, but instead of doing just the typical lattice, as you see, there's this photo here on the left. I was out at a site visit this winter, and I noticed how the snow was gathering in that lattice and it made this beautiful shape and it kind of inspired um, the, in, the inspiration. It was my inspiration for, for this gate. Um, so this is our proposed new entrance gate. Um, it would be painted white and the pillars would match the existing fencing that is over by the driveway and the pickets um, on either side would match what's already on site. So that is item A um, on our application. Uh, the second item is, going back to the site plan, is just realigning this bluestone path here along the front. It's very close to the house and it only allows a few plants to go in here, so we just wanna expand it um, and bring it over to the terrace so that I have a little bit more room to put some plants in. We would uh, reuse the bluestone uh, that's on the site, and then there's actually some bluestone over in the driveway. Um, there's a walkway here right now, and we would use that bluestone as well to fill in what we don't have um, for the realignment. And it would be on sand cement, uh, just, just very simple. Um, so that's pretty um, straightforward. Uh, item C is just removing the welded wire mesh everywhere. There's welded wire mesh in all the hedging around the property, and it's really yucky and it's bent and it's green, and we're just gonna tape all that out or we would like to. Um, item D is the removal of the fence in the driveway area. Um, going back to some of the project photos. There we go. You can see this driveway courtyard area has a really funny jog um, here with the gate 
and it goes in and then it steps over and there's a second gate and a third gate. So we just want to simplify it. We're just going to take the driveway gate out and straighten out the sections. Um, and I've met with some fence contractors and we think that we can actually reuse um, several of the panels. So just to outline it here, this jogged area, you can see my cursor, right? Um, that area would come out and we would just straighten it with two eight foot sections and it moves over so it aligns with the existing one. And then on this side, we would create an L with the fencing um, here, just so it kind of mirrors this side. And it's nice and simple. And then we have a little room on either side of the drive with the gravel driveway to do some planting there. So that's um, item number uh, E. So I guess item D was to remove this section of fencing and item E is to install new um, pickets to match what's there. Um, let's see, item F is this gravel driveway. So we don't wanna rip out the whole driveway. We just wanna top dress what's there um, and shift it and realign it. As you can see, sometimes this happens, um, the driveway is just migrated over and it's created this weird shape and then over here, again, it's on an angle and it doesn't line up with the house. So we're just shifting it over about two feet, three inches. So this area here will get soil and grass in the um, sidewalk will get extended and repaired. And then the sidewalk would get cut here and the gravel would get um, extended into this area where the bluestone comes out. Uh, so that's uh, pretty straightforward. The width of it doesn't really change. It's just about straightening it and shifting it a little bit. Um, and it, the same gravel would be used. Um, and we would like to put in a metal edge um, to kind of help uh, mitigate that migration of gravel that keeps happening um, along these edges. Um, let's see. Um, item G would be this new stone apron um, at the end. Right now, the gravel goes from gravel straight to asphalt. So in trying to come up with a design for that apron, um, again, we looked to the house and the house's architecture. And one of the existing, oh, here it is. Um, on the front of the house and on the side of the house, there's this existing um, native round stone, field stone um, on the house. And so the client really liked the look of this stone. So we would take a similar um, stone, same proportions, and just use it as uh, the apron um, in the driveway. And I, in, in walking around the village, I've noticed that, you know, this application of that round, rounded native stone has been used. Um, I saw it at 134 um, Center Street, and I also saw it on Westway Road not only in the crosswalk at Willow in Westway, but also at a house. Um, I don't remember the number of the house, but one of those houses very close by also had a similar apron. So this would be set in concrete and it would, <laughs> sorry, the dog's barking. It would be set in concrete. Um, and then the last item on our agenda or on my application is this new bluestone step here. This landing um, would stay. It's just right now there's only one step here and one step here. So we really just want to fill that out so we have a full wraparound step. Um, and we would get a piece of bluestone that would match. Um, and if it doesn't work, we would use all three. Um, we would just get all new ones to match kind of the integrity of the old bluestone. Um, so that's it for right now. Um, that is the application. I'd be happy to answer any questions um, if you have any. Sorry about the little dog barking here. Um, I had to go to a neighbor's house Thank to you, present. <laughs> okay, uh, do you want me to keep um, sharing or stop sharing? You can share, keep sharing. Um, or do you have any questions? Okay. Uh, I don't, Adam. Uh, looks good, Christina. Thank you. Thank you. Chris, do you have any questions? Thanks, Christina. Uh, yes, um, just quickly. So where the new section of driveway is going, 
the, the plan calls for a five foot section of asphalt pavement. Um, mm -hmm. And part of the area, it looks like you're removing some of the existing walk. Is that existing walk mm -hmm. loose stone or, or concrete? The existing walk is um, blue stone, and it's actually very damaged. I think trucks have been parking on it. Um, so the whole section going towards Southport Center is all blue stone with cracks right down the middle. I don't know that the Birdos will replace the whole sidewalk, um, but they would replace most. I don't. I I don't know if it's their responsibility or not. Um, I'm not familiar with that, but they would. They were planning to replace that part adjacent to the walk uh, to the gravel driveway. And yes, um, as you noted, um, that the town likes when you redo driveways to have an asphalt apron um, between the driveway and the road because the gravel um, goes into the road. But the after the snow melted, I just didn't think that the whole driveway needed to be completely repaved. So we weren't going to repave the whole thing. We were just going to top dress it. And so in that case, I wouldn't do the asphalt apron because we're not repaving the whole thing. We're just top dressing it. Does that answer your question? Uh, yes, yeah, sure it does. Thank you. Okay. That, that's my only question. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Darren? No questions. And Jim? No questions. Thank you, Christina. Thank you. And uh, I do not have any questions either. I think it's a uh, well thought out application, Christina. Thank you. And um, okay. I did not receive any letters in favor of this application. I didn't receive any letters opposing this application. So the hearing is closed. Thank you. And the next item on the agenda is Richard Mervis, 249 Old South Road in Southport for property located at 249 Old South Road in Southport for A, install pool gate and welded wire mesh fence from house to property line along South Road, evergreen shrubs, shrubs in front of welded wire mesh. We install six foot cedar privacy fence along east and north property lines. C install 18 by 35 foot uh, pool in rear side yard, pulled out 18 inch bluestone coping. D install double pool gate at garage. E repair, replace where necessary existing picket fence and gates along property line. F had shutters to restore. Restored windows. Uh, again, I am Christina Gates. I have to announce myself correct at the beginning of each application. Yes. <laughs> I don't yes. sound redundant. Thank you. Okay. Um, I am the landscape architect representing um, uh, Richard Mervis and Jeffrey Rosen at for, um, 249 Old South Road. Um, as uh, Adam just outlined, um, we are seeking approval for the installation of a pool, um, pool fencing, um, and I can go through those items uh, quickly with you. Um, so item number A um, is this section. Um, just orient yourself. This is Old South Road right here, and this is Pequot. So they're right on the corner. Um, I'm sure everybody has seen this beautiful house right here. That's the home. Uh, Along Old South Road, we are proposing an evergreen hedge, probably a holly hedge, um, with a welded wire mesh on the back side. And then in the center, a double pool gate, um, which would be a wood pool gate. And this is a um, illustration of um, the gate. Um, it would be six feet high and um, six feet wide, and uh, it has I hope you can see that these lines here, those are pickets. So the kind of shaded gray is a picket. And um, at the end of the application, or I thought I included the hardware, but the hardware would be um, hidden. I thought I had the hardware in here. It's, it's drawn right here, you can see on this. Um, it's a pretty, 
basic hardware. It doesn't need to be a magna latch, which is nice, and that's why we designed the gate to be higher, because you have, to, if you don't use the magna latch, um, you can use a, a regular latch as long as it's self-closing um, when you locate it higher than 48 inches. So that's why we have this um, latch in design. So that is the gate and um, the hedge that would be seen from Old South Road to enter into the backyard. Um, then um, along this property line that um, abuts 225 Old South Road, there would be a standard cedar um, stockade fence. And I've put in a photo, um, very basic. Um, we're planning on planting that out from the interior, but I really don't think um, it will be seen very much from, from the road. Um, right around here on the neighbor's property is where the horn beam kind of begin, if you're familiar with the um, adjacent property. So that stockade fence runs all the way down to the corner, and then it will come all the way down, not as far as the old one did, but to this point right here where it would end. Um, so that is item number B. Um, and item number C, this is the pool. It's 18 by 35 um, with 18 inch coping. Um, pretty standard um, full length step here for the shallow end. Deep end is here. Um, there are two lights and it would be in grass. Um, the pool equipment would be list, um, back here, so it would be out of view of the public way, but that's where the pool equipment is in case you're wondering. Um, let's see, that brings us to item number D, which is the double pool gate at the garage, which is right here. Uh, this design of this pool gate is similar to the front gate, but just a little bit simpler because it's not uh, quite as important. It's not quite as ornate, but it's just a very standard um, cedar fence, again, with uh, the mountain hardware um, latch and um, self-closing, closing, so to me, pool code. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, and then these two panels are what connect to the stockade and to the garage, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Um, item number, uh, let's see. Oh, and then to repair, uh, I'm not sure if you've all walked around, but the, the fence is, is really not in great shape. Um, and so the client was just asking if they could fix parts of the fence. They wouldn't change anything. So where a picket needs to be taken out and replaced, they would like to replace it, but it would be completely to match what they have there. Nothing would change. Um, it would either be repaired or replaced with the exact same thing. So that's um, primarily just all the fencing around the outside, which is in disrepair. And then the last item is to add shutters um, uh, back here, add shutters to the restored window. So I guess this window um, was approved um, and they would like to put, you know, existing shutters um, on either side. And I hope that's, um, self-explanatory there. So I would be happy to answer any questions um, on this application at this time. Okay, thank you, Christina. Um, Jim? Jim, do you have any questions? Okay, we'll move on. Darren, do you have any questions? No questions. Thank you. Chris, do you have any questions? Yes, I do. Uh, thank you for your presentation. The, um, the cedar stockade fence that you are proposing is um, noted in our design guidelines as um, considered inappropriate so I wondered mm -hmm. on why you decided to go with a stockade style fence. Um, I personally um, like a nicer stockade fence, but um, my client felt because this was going to get fully planted out um, that he would rather invest 
in the plantings along that edge because it's going to get covered up either way. And because it starts behind a six foot hedge that it wouldn't really be visible from the road that we could plant it out and hide it. Um, but I do understand what you're saying about the stockade test. Um, I think it's just about trying to allocate um, prior, or just prioritize in the design. So I think he had big plans for plantings in front of it. So that's why we chose the simple stockade pen. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. That's all I have for you. Park it. Sorry, not for me, thank you. Okay, Art. Okay, Art. And going back and to Jim. Uh, Jim, do you have any questions? Questions. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Jim. And um, I don't have any questions either. We're seeing another um, nice application. Uh, I did not receive any letters uh, in favor of this application, and I did not receive any letters opposing this application. So the hearing is closed. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is uh, Brandon and Katie Conovitz, 225 Old South Road in South Fork, a property located at 225 Old nice. South Road in South Fork. Uh, 2A, expand gravel driver with matching gravel and reclaimed granite planks with steel edging. B, saw cut existing pool terrace and install new granite terrace and spa. C, install field stone wall and seat wall adjacent to new spa terrace. D, landscape lighting in pool spa area, and E, stepping stones in front of one beam hedge at pool gates. Um, I downloaded the wrong um, app, so if you just give me one second, I will just upload the proper one. So if you just give me one okay. second. Sorry about that. Christina Gates, again. Um, I am the landscape architect um, representing Brandon and Katie Konovitz. Um, um, I'll, file, I'll file one second. Sorry, bear with me. Uh, let's see. I feel like this is it. Nope. This is it? Nope. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Just give me one second. Oh, sugar plums. Um, would it be better, Adam, if you skipped this one and came back to me after the next one, or do you mind just waiting two minutes? One minute. No, we'll just wait. We'll, we'll wait a minute. Okay. Like okay, thank done. you. I appreciate it. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to stop sharing for a second just to spare you. Okay, here it is. I got it. Okay. Download. Okay. Today has been full of technical difficulties. I just have to say it's just downloading. Um, so I can begin while it's downloading. Um, the did you read through the items adam yet yes yes i have for brandon and katie okay sorry i was distracted <laughs> okay um so the property is located at 225 old south road which is um next door to um okay now i have to screen share again so i'm going to share again okay okay share screen Entire screen share. Okay, here we go. I can't believe that worked. Okay. Good job. Good job. Um, okay. So, um, like I just said, um, the project that we just reviewed was right over here. So, we're on um, the next door neighbors, Brandon and Katie Conovitz. 
Um, we have five items um, in our application. The first item um, is to expand um, a portion of the existing gravel driveway. Right now, there's grass panels here and grass panels here. So we would like to take the grass out of that area and just add more gravel into these corners. Okay. Um, and then I'm just going to zoom in so you can see a little bit better. Um, we wanted to introduce um, reclaimed granite banding uh, along. This is the kind of main entrance from the driveway here in front of here, the reclaimed granite paving, and then sporadically um, along the edges in the plant bed and to create a banding. So you have a threshold that you drive across coming into the courtyard and then a couple pieces here. Um, I have brought, so in um, aerial, it's this, this is a trampoline, but um, a portion of this would be gravel and a portion of this would be gravel and we would do the banding there, if that makes sense. Um, this is an example of a similar project where uh, we've taken these reclaimed, sometimes third generation granite planks and laid them in the driveway with the gravel and they create a, um, a really nice um, natural looking, um, a little less formal uh, courtyard area. And uh, similar to this one, there's planting in some of those spaces. So uh, that is item number A. Um, so, okay, so that's item A. Okay, so that is primarily that way, all this area right here. Um, item B and the majority of the rest of our application is over in this section of the house. Uh, as I showed you before, um, if you look at the house from the front, there are these just gorgeous hornbeam hedges. They've been immaculately maintained. Uh, boxwood hedges in front of the pool fencing and boxwood hedging here. So we really have a fairly solid wall between the front and the back. Um, this is the pool area, um, which is boxed in um, by evergreen shrubs. Um, and we are proposing, um, they, uh, my client has asked for um, a spa area. So uh, Regina and I, my partner, um, are suggesting uh, and asking for approval to saw cut the existing granite where my cursor is. This is the dotted line is the existing terrace. It has this curve here. We're suggesting, and we measured this out in the grout joints of the terrace um, to create this cut in the granite along here. So this would remain um, kind of the creamy um, granite that's there. And then we would create a whole new terrace area um, out of a very similar granite. We didn't want to reuse the same exact granite because there would be inevitably some very uh, variation. So we thought that if it's going to be a little bit different, we might as well make it different. So it's the same consistency. It has that same fine texture of the granite that's there, but it's just a little bit brighter. It's a little whiter. Um, and it actually kind of matches the gravel in the driveway very well, this white um, granite. Um, and so this would be the new spa area with the granite and there's a round seven foot spa with a 12 inch coping completely flush. And then we would have some stepping stones through the grass that would come back over here. Right on the sides in here, it's, it was beautifully designed. They've hidden the pool gates on either side. Um, Unfortunately, over time, you know, this one just doesn't get used. It's so shaded out. Um, and so this area really doesn't get used anymore. So this is the primary entrance. So um, item B is to kind of create this saw cut here and to install this new um, granite terrace with the saw. Um, item C is to install a field stone wall and a seat wall in this corner. So this is the field stone wall and, the, and then this is a field stone seat wall, this L piece right here. And the idea here is that looking back towards the spa, it kind of grounds the spa and gives it a place to be. 
Um, the grade here also slopes down and we've noticed that part of the pool decking is exposed. So we thought that having this wall here would also kind of mitigate that dropping grade a little bit. So you don't feel like you're falling off something. Um, if you look in the aerial, the hemlocks in this area are overgrown. So we would take the hemlocks out and they're really, um, they're losing their bottom branches. So we're proposing putting in some new arborvitae or tall, um, very dense evergreen here to really block um, views towards the neighbor and give both neighbors more privacy. Um, so that's where that would also be the backdrop of this seat wall. <laughs> uh, Regina and I did some elevation so that you could kind of get a sense of the style of the seat wall. Um, this is the view looking um, towards the neighbor. So looking at the, the project that we just discussed previously. So this woman is sitting on the seat walls to give you scale. This would all be native field stone. Um, we printed out some photos of some stones that we thought um, represented a style. Um, and we tried to render the walls such that you had a clear idea of the look, but see these larger um, pieces of field stone um, would make up this wall. So the taller side would be parallel to the neighbor's house and give the spa that nice backdrop. Uh, we have a plant bed right in front of it, so there would be some planting in here. And then looking from inside the pool area back towards Old South Road, so you would picture the horn beams are here, there would be a small 20 inch seat wall um, on the backside. And I'll just show you on the plan so you can put it together, what I just discussed. So the first elevation was looking this way, and the second one was looking this way for the wall. Um, let's see, there we are, where's my next item? Um, oh, and one thing I wanted to add, you probably don't notice pool equipment anywhere. Um, the pool equipment is gonna go in the basement. The pool equipment for the, the existing pool is over here by the garage and it's nearly impossible to get anything over there now. So um, we thought it'd be best just to put it all in the basement, then it doesn't even become an issue for historic um, having that pad and trying to hide it. Um, let's see, item number D is the landscape lighting in the pool and spa area. So I have one here, two, three, and four in this area and they're very small lights, um, path lights, and they wouldn't be higher than 16 inches, and this is what they would look like. And I thought this was a, a very um, a clear picture of how they have very slim profile. Um, they almost kind of disappear like a, like a black picket does, um, and they would have this brass um, color, which I think um, you see a lot in the village. And then I know you have a lot of things to go over tonight, so I don't want to take up too much time. Um, again, these are the different elevations um, of the wall. They're in the application, if you wanted to see. We, we just rendered two of them, um, so you can kind of get a good idea. And the last um, item is item number E, and that is this section right here. Um, because south is over here, this is all north, northern shaded by the horn beams. And so it's really just dirt right now. So every time you walk through there, you're just tracking dirt through. So we'd suggest taking the granite um, paving for the spa area and just putting it um, dry laid um, in here on sand cement, um, very simple pattern. You probably wouldn't even see it because of the grass. Um, again, the color is very similar to the gravel. Um, it's a white granite and you know, these are all measured out. So this is how it would be laid out that we've measured each piece particularly. So it's not schematic. That's actually what it would look like. Um, so I hope that that is clear and um, that is the application. So I'd be happy to um, answer any questions should you have any. Thank you, Christina. Art, would you like to start? None for me, Adam. Thank you.
can't hear anything. I'm not sure if somebody's asking me a question. I just hear electronic sounds. I hear the same thing. I can see people's lips moving, but I can't hear anything. Okay. Okay. okay yeah, good. me too. I think it might be our turn. No, mine's muted. Or I had it muted. It seems to have stopped now. The electronic <laughs> garbled, whatever. Okay. Here, Darren. <laughs> Sorry, do I don't know if you were talking about it. Um, I don't have any questions. Okay. okay, thank you. Art, I didn't hear you. Do you have any questions? Or are you still having audio? None comments? for none for me, thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, Chris, do you have any questions? I don't have any questions. Thank you. Okay. Um, Jim, do you have any questions? No questions. Thank you. Okay. Do I, do I hear George Clark here? <coughs> oh, shit. Yes, I'm there. George, when, when did you join us? Can you about 15. 15 minutes ago. Okay, George Clark has joined us. It's about uh, a little before six. Um, did you hear this last application? Did you have any? No. The reason I okay. Um, and Christina, I don't have any any um, questions for your application. Another good application, and um, okay, I did you. not receive any letters. Did not receive any letters in um, uh, favor of your application, and I did not, did not receive any letters in opposition of your application. So the hearing is closed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for uh, your patience tonight with the um, technical difficulties. <laughs> All right, I will stop sharing. Have a great no, no night. Problem. Adam, I can't hear you if you're talking. All right, I'm back. Somehow my I get disconnected. It's been a crazy evening. I have two. Oh, um, yeah. Where, where did where, where did I leave you leave? I leave you off. You closed the hearing on the last application. I didn't hear you read the new one, so I'm not sure which application we're on. Oh, okay. Okay. Hang on, I have to I have to redo the conference bridge again for the tenth time.
Okay, next item on the agenda is Michelle and Andrew Adams, 564 Harbor Road in Southport for property located at 564 Harbor Road in Southport for a two new exteriors consoles. Adam, I have to recuse myself for this one. Yes, and Darren Raymond Locke is recusing yourself in this application. I so, saw Olivia Charney here to present. Is she still here? Yes. Olivia, do you need to uh, unmute yourself? Can you hear me? Okay, yes. yes. Thank you. Okay, do you need me to share anything on screen? Obviously, you've seen the application. Um, if you can, if not, I'll, I can share it for you. Okay, that will be great. Thank you. You're probably a little better okay. at that than I am. <laughs> See if I can find it. Okay. Okay. So we, sure. As you can see, this um, first slide shows the new location. They will be placed um, on the two pilasters on either side of the entry door. We've kind of come to this conclusion after a few other renditions of the lighting solution. Originally, there's always been a hanging fixture at this location. And the initial one that was proposed, ordered, was not heavy enough. Unfortunately, this house sits really high up on Harbor Road and is really exposed. This is a comparable fixture within the neighborhood, and we have a few different examples of those as well. But we've kind of come to this conclusion in that the conditions of the weather are much more extreme and much more frequent than they have been in years past. So we feel that the safest way to provide lighting on the front is to have these fixtures anchored on either side of that entry door versus a hanging fixture where we had cables suspended for separate um, security and those, the higher wind just made it swing. And ultimately the atoms were not really comfortable with that remaining as a lighting solution in front. So these, we did a lot of research, again, drove around in the area to find particular fixtures that would be appropriate. I do work with a lot of historic uh, salvage and um, kind of architectural dealers. And one of them in particular reproduces a lot of his Lighting. So these uh, will be cast. Um, and this one on the right that you see pictured um, is the, the model that it will look like. And it will be a black cast iron uh, with this acrylic globe. And so you see all the dimensions. Again, I think it's pretty straightforward. Yep. These are just some samples okay. of the finishes. And at one point Anything on site, else? we done kind of model the scale of what those would look and feel like from the road. Okay. I'm not sure if Olivia can screen, but is everyone else? You, Jim, can you please wait until it's your turn, please? Okay. Are you, are you finished, Olivia? I'm finished. If anyone has any questions, like, okay. there's a lot of visual reference and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jim, go ahead. I'm not seeing a little bit of screen, but I, I looked at the pictures on the application and uh, I, I I need not look at the screen now. I've seen them on the application. 
Okay, do you have a question? No, no other question. Okay, thank you. Darren, do you have any questions? Darren, do you have any questions? Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Darren is recused. What are we talking about? Um, Chris, Shea, Chris, do you have any questions? Hi, uh, no questions for me. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Or do you have any questions? No, thank you, Adam. And George, I, I almost forgot you since you haven't been here. Any questions? You have to unmute yourself. I thought I did. No questions. Okay. <laughs> thank you, George. And I don't have any questions, Olivia. Thank you for your presentation. Um, and I did not receive any letters in favor of this application. I did not receive any letters opposing this application. So the hearing is closed. Thank you. Okay. Next item on the agenda is Mr. and Mrs. Robert Wright, 260 Harbor Road in Southport for property located at 260 Harbor Road in Southport for A, new landscape lighting, B, change previously approved bronze railing cap on exterior railings to painted steel to match posts, C, existing stone steps previously approved to be rebuilt to remain, and D, new railing along sidewalk between residence and street previously approved to be omitted. Hi, I'm John Wozolewski. I'm from David Scott Parker Architects. Uh, I'm here representing our clients, Robert and Susan Wright, at 260 Harbor Road. Uh, I'm also here with Jesse Lukes, who is the um, landscape lighting designer, uh, who can answer additional questions if there are any. Um, and if I can uh, make best use of time, I'm going to go directly into a screen share. And um, okay, great. Okay, can you all see that okay? Yes, yes? Okay. excellent, great, let's yes. move right in. Okay, so the first part of the application has to do with landscape lighting. Um, uh, the landscape, there are various um, components being used throughout the site and I'll go through them one by one. So the first item is path lighting, which you can see an image of it on the right side of your screen. These uh, would be no more than 16 inches above the ground and they're indicated by this symbol on the plan. And we can see them, they would be along the front of the property here and along the sidewalk here. There would be two of them um, inside the gate to either side of this stone walkway. And then several along these uh, stone steps that ascend from the driveway to the rear terrace. You can see them, they would be again along either side of the path here, along the front of the building here. And then along again, the path line will be along this walkway of stone steps ascending from the driveway to the rear terrace. The next items would be these uh, bullet down lights. These would be mounted in the tree. They would be shining down. We would be certain to make certain uh, we would make certain that the fixtures would be concealed in the um, foliage. They would not be shining onto neighbor's property. Um, and all of them are uh, they are low intensity and they are shielded. Um, we're showing them now on these large trees in the front to give illumination to the driveway and the front walk area. There are also several in this tree in the back that would help illuminate these uh, pathways. And again, we're talking about this tree and this tree and also uh, one of the large trees back in this corner. The next item is this uh, up light. And again, uh, this is uh, would be used primarily at the back of the property um, next to this pathway. And then in uh, the ones that you would be able to possibly see from the street would be for these uh, clump of trees here. Um, I don't think these are visible, um, but there are some shown on the back as well.
And then again, you could see we're talking about here and you the few over here, but remember now there's a there is a, an addition going on this side of the property. So most of this area is now shielded from the street. Uh, there are a small handful of ring mounted. These are um, up hanging in trees and they shine directly down. They're indicated by this green triangular symbol. And you can see uh, one here and a few in these trees back here. And looking at the photo again, that would be here. And for these trees back at the back side of the property. And then the last few are uh, there in the water feature. So these are not visible from the street. These are back uh, around this existing fountain here, which you can see here. And that's these are completely shielded from the street. The other part of the application has to do with railings that you pre previously approved. And they're just a couple of things. There's a few things that they've decided to eliminate uh, and uh, may, not may not be important to bring, but, but just to clarify what we're doing. Um, at one point, there was a handrail on the side of this uh, walkway. I know um, uh, it was approved against the better judgment of some of the um, uh, commissioners. They, um, Mr. Wright, who is elderly, who doesn't walk very well, is they, they did uh, they didn't particularly like the look of this either, and they determined that he either just is not using this walkway, or that it's, his walking is is good enough that they don't need this handrail, so they're eliminating it. Um, they were going to rebuild the stone steps that are here to a more gradual rise and run. Um, they decided to observe that he's getting up and down the stairs well enough, so they will not be doing that. But what they have asked, um, we had previously requested that these handrails be, um, have, there'd be the uprights would be painted steel and that the cap was going to be bronze. Um, and I'll go back to that in just a second. So you can see this, this is the location at the front steps where we would have it. We would still have a handrail around this walkway here, which is this walkway here, which goes from the front steps to the driveway. And then there would still be a handrail uh, on these steps at the back of the property. Um, and you can see them in this probably best here. There's alongside the front steps, alongside this front walkway, not on the walkway to the street and then along the back here all these other locations were previously approved so uh the last thing again this cap piece which was previously as proved as bronze they would like to do it in painted steel to match the uprights and that's everything i have uh and um unless you have questions okay thank you john <clears throat> george you like to start Can you give me a minute? Okay, I'll go on. Jim? Jim, I, I can't hear you. Sorry, no questions, thank you. Thank you, Jim. Uh, Darren, do you have any questions? No questions from me. Uh, Chris, questions? Hi, yes. Um, could you uh, let us know the total count on the light fixtures? It seems like there's 50 or so. Uh, I'll do that right now. So in terms of fixtures that are visible from a public way, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Forty six. Thank you. No further questions. Is that it? Okay, Art, do you have any questions? Uh, I don't. Thanks, Adam. Okay. Um, John, I, did, I am a little concerned about the number of light fixtures and the, the number of uplight fixtures as well. I mean, typically, we don't allow uplight fixtures. Those are the BU mm -hmm. fixtures, right? 
Sorry, and that would be uh, which ones? The BU bullet uplight. Uh, yes, those would be the BU fixture, correct. So at the front of the house, they have four on the right, uh, four on the right tree. Uh, oh, is that the, uh, no, That's the, the ones on the no, the ones at the very front of the tree are down lights. Those are those are hanging in the tree, shining down. Okay, and I, okay. and I'm so, concerned. I, I, we don't we, we haven't seen many of those. I'm not sure how that's going to affect the landscape lighting. You know, the, is a, it seems like the whole property is going to be lit up. Um, yeah, I mean, these are actually fairly low intensity. I can have the, the lighting designer, um, Jesse, could speak to that. Okay. Jesse, are you? Uh, How about now? Yes. Okay, we can hear you now. I just, okay, great. Yeah, so uh, just please, uh, just please say, state your name for the record, please. Thanks. Sorry, Jesse Laux. And I'm doing the landscape lighting design for the right residence. Um, the up lights would be for a halogen equivalent, they would be between 20 watts to 35 watts. So they are low intensity. Um, they are, there's uh, each fixture has glare shields. They have hex L louvers, different sorts of tricks to diminish any glare. They're positioned um, with the neighbors in mind so that the, to minimize the light trespass. Um, mm -hmm. so I do try to do a, a low intensity fixture. I mean, the intent, the, the intent is to light the landscaping. It seems like. So that at night you can, you get a sense of depth, right? And of the, of the surrounding landscape. Correct. correct. Yep. That'd be correct. And, okay. and these are, I, I believe that these fixtures, my intent is for these fixtures and the lighting itself to be on a, uh, like an on off switch as opposed to say a photo cell or a, an every night timer. These would be event lighting as opposed to every day. Right. Okay. Well, I, I think we're um, site lighting in the, in the sort districts is something that, you know, we, we try to minimize. Um, and we've had many applications come through here where we've asked them to reduce the number of light fixtures. Um, and, and I think, I, I, unfortunately, I think you, you have way too many. I mean, it's great. It would be a great um, lighting plan. Um, I think it would be beautiful anywhere else, <laughs> you know? But um, in, the, in the district, I think it would, it would really, um, this property is, is going to glow, like, more than any other property on the street and, and really stand out. Um, I, I, so. I think that if you're taking into account simply the number of fixtures, that might be a mistake because we can limit the number of fixtures and put a higher wattage lamp in there as opposed to maybe distributing that wattage over numerous fixtures. So I, I'm, I'm not so sure it's a, a fixture count that really is the, would be the issue. It would be more of a, a wattage or a lumen output that I think that would be most concerning. Yeah, it's a similar effect though, yeah. I mean, maybe it's not as as um, intense, yeah. but I mean, the, the, the one, and, you know, in the middle middle of. Go ahead. Oh no! What I was going to say is, when you when you are mount talking about mounting fixtures high up in a tree and shining down, um, when you look at the photometrics of the fixture, by the time that light reaches the ground, it's actually very you know the the effect is is fairly soft, right? So. Mm -hmm. it, there is a, you know, some thought, especially when you look at the number of fixtures on the front of the property, the path lights that are that you see would actually are going to have sort of a bigger impact than what we're talking about with some of these landscape things because of the distances that we're talking about and the intensity of the fixtures involved. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, Jesse. Yeah, I, I would agree. No, and I, I think mean, that you, the inverse you, applies as well. If, if you mount a fixture high up, by the time that light reaches the ground, it is soft and very uh, diffused and diminished. The same applies for when you're using an uplight that um, by the time it hits the 40 foot canopy on, say, that larger oak tree in the back, it's going to be much, you know, it's, it's a softer light. Well, I mean, clearly it's, it's meant to do something. And it's, you know, yeah. as opposed to having, if you had no light fixtures there versus all these lights, it'll be, it's going to be a substantial difference, right? It's going to change the, the, the property at night substantially. 
I mean, right? They, uh, they are um, intended to be seen. Like I said it. Go ahead, John. No, they are intended to be seen, right? but I think it's a question yeah. of we are looking at um, we are looking at subtlety here, and they're they obviously they want yeah. it to be beautiful, and they're you know, and there and there's lands, you know, really what we're looking at is replacing what's already there because there are there is landscape lighting there, and they do include up lighting, and it does include higher wattage fixtures. And we're looking at taking that out and replacing it with something that's softer and more um, nuanced. And um, yeah, so I mean, that's that's okay. Yeah. Um, well, it concerns me. So I just want to let you know that, that it's something Understood. that does concern me. And I'm sure the other commissioners will, will have discussion about it. But um, yeah, those, those are we, my comments. We appreciate, we appreciate that. And, you know, we, we always strive to be respectful of what the commission uh intends and what the guidelines call for um in the years we've been here and we're not we've not been in all your meetings we haven't necessarily come across this as an issue but obviously we defer to the commission and our interest and, and want to make certain that what we're doing is in keeping with what's intended okay thank you george you want to you, you want to come back you have any questions yeah, my I'm I'm kind of on the boat of saying that there there looks like an awful lot of lights. Uh the lights in the trees uh, that shine down make me a little nervous. Um I, I get the path lights. Um but I think from the street there's there's quite a bit of light going on on the on the front of the property. And yes, it may be dim, but it's still a lot of light. So um I'm I'm of the opinion that there's maybe a little more lighting than necessary. George. Uh, okay, if it's anyone else have any questions? Um, if not, okay, I did not receive any letters in favor of this application. I did not receive any letters opposing this application. So the hearing's closed. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is Haley and Christopher Milligan, 75 Old South oh. Road, <clears throat> South Fork 4, property located at 75 Old South Road in Southport for A, a new two-story structure with attached three-car garage, and B, new pool and terrace. Hi, everyone. My name is Tanner White. Um, I'm the architect representing uh, Haley and Chris Milligan for the property at 75 Old South. Can everyone hear me correctly? Yep. Perfect. Um, okay, well, I'm going to share my screen with the application here. Um, all right, can everybody see this? Okay. All right. So there's a little bit of a story here. Um, you, you know, my clients moved into this house. They absolutely love the house. They looked to, we've been here now twice with the HDC. They looked to build a three car garage with an office above, which was approved. I want to say a few months ago. Um, the house was built in the 1990s. So it's not a historically built home. Obviously it, it's in the historic area. So it's replicating a, a Victorian architecture. Um, and we went through the HDC process, got this approved, went out to bid. And then once we got into the ground, um, we started realizing that in order to build this um, three car garage, the soils around it um, became a little bit cost prohibitive in the sense of have, actually having to shore up the entire house. There was a number of things relating to soil, relating to the actual um, bones of the house that, you know, became a little bit cost prohibitive. And so the client loved the house so much that basically um, they've decided to, uh, or we were going through an application to more or less rebuild the house that's there. So um, I'm going to go through the process here and then um, there's two parts. There's the architecture and then there's the landscape design. And once I'm finished with the architecture, I'm going to pass it off to uh, the landscape designers. So this is the survey of the existing house with the three car garage that was approved at the last time that we met. Um, you can see obviously the shape of the house here, the, the driveway location, et cetera, et cetera. We then are now proposing something very, very similar. I mean, we're essentially rebuilding that, that existing house that's there um, in the same footprint in the same shape, you know, same sort of landscape design in the back. Um, this is the landscape plan, which I'll, I'll pass on to the landscape architects after we go through the architecture. Um, 
But in a nutshell, you know, this, and I know everyone has this application, but this is the layout of the house, which again, from an internal standpoint is maybe slightly different, um, not altogether different, but the actual shape of the house is more or less intact. The, again, the client loved the house. Um, they really loved the, the, the look, they loved the street, they loved the area, they loved everything about it. And they're really looking to just replicate what's there. So this is the front elevation um, of, of our proposed design. Um, so we're sort of replicating all the Victorian eight um, details and columns and crown and shutters and windows um, and materials that are on the existing house now. So this is the front elevation. There's a, a detail of the rake and crown molding. The rear elevation, the right side, and then the left side here. And then we're just going to get into the, the 3D aspect. So this is the existing house as viewed from Old South, um, looking at the right side of the house. And then this is the, the front of the house where you can see the two-car garage here. So again, you know, white clapboard, traditional uh, double-hung windows, red copper gutters, and this is more or less the shape of the house now. What was approved um, with our last application was this, which was rebuilt, you know, building a new three car garage with the space above here. And then what we're proposing is, is this, which is again, rebuilding sort of the, the house that it is, uh, existing there now. Um, the, the rest of this application just, or the rest of these, um, these documents are, are the same as it uh, was uh, submitted in the last HTC application, which is, you know, the Pella Reserve traditional double hung window, the generator specs, um, the floodlight um, uh, uh, specs here, the sconces, which are here, which again, largely replicate the existing sconces that are there now. And the locations of these are actually shown on the architectural first floor plan, which are, you know, in between the garages here, flanking the mudroom uh, door, and then really that's about that's about it. And then the flood lamp uh, locations are shown on the second floor plan here, and again, in the same locations that they currently exist today. So through the rest of the application, there's the the, the specs for the double hung windows, the floodlights, the the sconces, the generator, which is the same generator that we used in the last application. And, um, and that really kind of completes this application. I'm going to switch just for a minute, um, to show you the three actual 3d model here, which will show you. This guy here. So, again, as you can see from our 3d model, it is <clears throat> a rebuild of the existing, um, structure with the previous HDC application that was approved. So. Shutters, you know, Victorian eight columns, which are consistent throughout the uh, throughout that area. Um, the crown detail on top of the windows, the rake molding, the eave molding, the copper gutters, even this arched double hung window on the third floor here. The materials for the base of the house. There's no azac. There, it's all wood materials. Same thing with the garage doors, et cetera, et cetera. So again, to kind of come full circle. The client is looking to essentially rebuild the house that was previously approved and originally built in the 1990s um, in order to, you know, sort of keep in consistency with what's there now, also keep in consistency with what's there in the street. Um, and with the addition of some landscape elements, which I'm going to pass on to at this point, this is, you know, the, the completion of our of our application. Um, it's we've just gone through zoning um, last week. And we were approved through zoning. I know that that's not applicable on this um, hearing, but it is something that I would note that this house in coverage is actually smaller than the existing or the previous application. And it's actually smaller than the existing house by 0.2%. So rebuilding the house a little bit smaller in coverage, keeping all of the architectural details that are intact, but just, you know, sort of doing it with new construction. Um, due to the sort of failing systems and failing applications that are existing in the house now. So with that said, um, I'm going to pass it on to the landscape architect uh, who's going to talk about uh, their portion of the work.
Uh, hi, uh, good evening, commissioners. This is Jonathan Hopkins and Joseph Werner with Catherine Herman Design. Uh, this is our, can everyone hear and see our screen? Yes. Yep. Okay, great. Uh, so overall details, materials, and landscape plan remain uh, largely unchanged from our previous HDC approvals. Uh, there have been some adjustments to the terraces uh, so that they align uh, with some slight changes to the new architectural footprint, um, but they're largely the same as our June 2020 approval. Um, just to scroll down here. Uh, fencing and gates uh, remain identical from the same June uh, 2020 approval. Um, <clears throat> slight adjustments were made where the uh, fences meet the architecture, um, but everything else is, is largely the same. Um, you know, picket gates, uh, wood panel uh, for shower enclosure. And this is our uh, landscape lighting plan. It remains identical to the previous approval from January of this year. Uh, our reduced lighting plan per the HTC's comments uh, with fixtures and in the same location as well as the same quantities. Um, the Unit fixtures are located here uh, with quantities remaining the same. Um, Happy to answer any questions. Uh, you ready for questions? Yep, I can. Yeah. Okay, we'll start with Art. Uh, I have no questions, Adam. Okay, thanks, sir. Uh, Chris. Hi, um, thanks for your presentation. Um, Tanner, could you explain a little bit more detail about why the, why the house is supposed to be demolished? And um, also, it seemed like the, the height of the garage and the new um application is taller than the one that was previously approved and the, i wanted to know also about the height of the new house with respect to what previously what exists now yeah so um the main reason why we are you know we went out to you know obviously bid and we started investigating the house once we got into the soils, the soils are such that it's all sand and eroding. So in order to actually build this three car garage, we would literally have to have, you know, like when you're building a bridge, shore up, drive these uh, metal piles down 12 feet into bedrock in order to support the right side of the house from falling over. It was a figure in the 300s and 400s of thousands of dollars range to hold up the house on one side and then excavate and then build what's there what we what we were approved for and then remove those those shorings so it was one of those things where after we got into the soils we realized that okay and then also further um, investigation into the structure there was a little bit of sagging in a lot of the structure the, the all the systems were older um, in terms of like electrical there was all, little to no um, adequate insulation. So it became one of those things where the cost to do, you know, sort of Frankenstein, the, the construction, the, the, the renovation was getting largely similar to the cost of the new construction. And so without trying, and, and also with no, you know, guarantee from um, Norwalk Marine, uh, the people who were the contractors in order to do the shoring that, you know, there would not be any structural failings during this undertaking. It became largely apparent that it would be beneficial to sort of wipe the slate clean and rebuild what's there in place. So that's, that's the answer to why uh, the, the new construction came about in terms of the height of the house. The height actually is. Um, just about the same as, as it was before, because we're actually going to be lowering the first floor about 18 inches um, while increasing the first floor height by about a foot. Um, we're sort of offsetting that height. So the actual height from the, the, the street presence from the uh, from the road is going to remain largely the same in terms of 
the height of the garage um, on the on the left side compared to uh, you know the main house. Again, that has to do with the grade change of of lowering the house, which keeping the garage as we have currently designed sort of appears that the the garage is going to be a little bit higher by about 18 inches to, to 20 inches. Thank you for that, Tanner. Any other questions, Chris? That, that's it for questions for me. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Darren, do you have any questions? Um, Adam, if this is not um, appropriate, let me know. But did you guys, you're in a local historic district, and as a result, you're on the state register of historic places, which opens up historic tax credits to you. Did you look into that to see the cost differential if you were to parcel out the work that needs to be done in $100,000 packets? Because you get 30% back on, on projects, $100,000. We didn't look into that because it was again, it was something that was in the three to four hundred thousand dollar range in order to do what we were looking to do. And honestly, right. I, to be completely honest, I wasn't aware of that. Um, yeah. So, you know, I don't I don't know if that would have changed it because the, the, you know, the decimal of of the cost of this proposed project versus the last proposed project um, is so relatively close. And also, there's also the nervousness, quite frankly, of. Right. Literally putting a 12 foot piece of metal down into the ground, hitting bedrock, and there's also water down there and try, right. literally holding up the house while we're just trying to do a three car garage addition. So we were advised by both Norwalk Marine, the general contractor on site, that it would actually be almost the same price to just kind of start fresh and it would be safer um, in the long run. Um, I would just urge you if you can to to talk to shippo and see what might be feasible with them because like the state tax credits cover plumbing they cover electrical so mm -hmm. some of that can be mitigated and you can keep the structure which is listed um which is kind of my concern um and as i said the state historic tax credits if you can break the project into hundred thousand dollar packets, mm -hmm. it, you get 30% of hard costs of construction back on any $100,000. So if it's a $400,000 project, you're looking at 120 grand back. That's, that's good to know. I did not honestly uh, know that, but I still don't know. Again, I think it's, it's still the larger concern of, you know, literally yeah. <laughs> holding up a house while you're trying to build the, the, the three car garage. And it was I also, also the, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Sorry, I thought you were we, not. <laughs> it was also not just a three-car garage that we got approved for. We also had the screened-in porch in the back. That was also the addition to. So there were two places that were literally just pushing this house up to. And I understand that there is a tax credit, but it was just you know, it was the it was the choice that I think we all try uh, kind of came to the same conclusion on. Right, and I I totally respect that. It's just I would be remiss if I didn't say talk to Shippo because they have specialists that do this all the time. And um, since it is a listed house, it's always a little bit scary when somebody says they want to demolish it to build something exact. I know, and then, <laughs> I know. And then of course the you know the the caveat to that was it is a historic house built in the nineties. It doesn't and matter. It's listed, though. That's the problem, you know. Like, right. and it's lit, and it's built in such a way that people driving past it might very well look at that arch window and go, "Oh, that's very late nineteenth century." Yeah. So, um, and again, to be respectful of that, that's why we replicated what right. it was. The client loved the house. Like they, that's yeah. why we're literally down to the detail, replicating what's there. Right. So right. they love the house, but um, but thank you. I mean, again, that's, you know. I'm not all that old, but I'm still learning things new. Every day, so. <laughs> I'm not all that old either, but I, you know, since I'm on the HDC, the whole purpose is to preserve these historic structures. So I would be remiss in not letting you know about this if you didn't already know. So that was my only question. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Aaron. Um, George? Uh, no, I had no questions. Very nice presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Jim, do you have any questions? Oh, he's got a big explanation point. Get a little bit with. We'll come back to Jim. Maybe he can get back on. Um, 
I do have a couple questions. Uh, Tanner, do you, are you taking are you taking out the foundation or are you using the existing foundation or? No, we're going to take out the foundation due to the lowering of the, the actual height of the house. We're actually going to take out the foundation. Okay. So, the 1 thing I noticed in your, in your application is you have these. Um, specs for windows and it, and it shows them as. Um, cloud windows, aluminum cloud. That's that's if that's the case, that's a complete mistake. It, they're they're wood windows, and I can okay. I can clarify that with a follow up, um, you know, note or something. There's no there's no uh, um, attempt to do cloud windows. It's the same spec that I had brought in from the last HTC meeting. They're completely you know traditional wood windows, both inside and out. Uh, the the wood. I mean, again, I'm looking okay. at the. It, it, I think it's under options and upgrades. It says you know mahogany Doug fir. Maybe that's. Where the, the yeah, there's, there's, is, but no, it's there's definitely there's, wood. Okay. Yeah, there's definitely um, aluminum clad details in there, so that's why I was confused. Just to there's, make sure, I think that make there's sure clear that there's. Yeah. No, I, you're 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 absolutely right. And then to, you know, further, uh, put it in there. I mean, again, on the on the elevations, we can even just say, just it, it calls it out as you know pillow windows and doors, but we can clarify that by saying right. wood. There's no attempt for cloud here. Yes, yeah, so I think I think in in our deliberations we'll, or our, when we when we vote on it, we'll have to make that clarification just to make sure okay. that it's in there. No problem. Um, and it, I mean, I didn't see any uh, lighting. You're going to come back with a lighting plan for. I would imagine you're going to have some exterior lights in the house, right? The exterior lights that we have actually are shown on the first floor plan. There's. Uh, four sconces flanking the garage and the mudroom entrance, which are the same that's there now. And then the floodlights are also located on the second floor. There are these little circles and it says flood on them. Um, and again, they're in the same locations that are there currently. And, the, and you're replacing with this exact same fixture? The, because we don't know exactly what fixture there is, it's the, it's the closest thing that we could possibly find. And that's in the HDC application on, you know, closer to the end. Um, it's that you know the village copper, uh, you know, uh, wall lantern. It's it it oh, it's yeah. almost a complete replica of what's there now. Okay, and okay, so there's what just two two in the front. There's two on the mudroom, um, flanking the door, which is what's there now, and then there's a sconce in between the garage doors. And they're shown on the front okay. elevation. There's a little icon, and then they're also shown on the first floor plan. They're those little J, okay, or it actually says A, um, with a little circle and the little um, crosshairs on it. Oh yeah, I got that. Okay. And those are the only exterior sconces no, on and, the front of the house. And those are the only exterior lights at all. There's no, um, like, are there lights in the porch, covered porch? Um, there's recessed lighting going to be in the covered porch. Um, we can definitely notate that, but again, it's going to be the same thing that's there now. Um, we weren't introducing a new sconce next to the door because that's not what's there now. Um, and then anything in terms of landscape lighting is actually on the landscape plan uh, as well. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, because it's a new building, yeah, we need to know, like, just because the lights existed, I mean, you're showing the ones in the garage and the back mudroom, but any other lighting you'd need to come back and just show us what you're doing. Is it something that I could um, propose uh, in this application that will include six lights spaced evenly throughout the covered porch and the re recess lights to match existing? Uh, not really. I mean, it needs to it needs to be in the in the application. We can't okay. really add things, um, unfortunately. So, um, yeah, so other than that, I don't have any other questions. Um, Jim, is Jim back or no? I think Jim is having bandwidth trouble. So, anyway, um, I did not receive any um, letters in favor of this application. And I did not receive any letters uh, opposing this application. So the hearing is closed. Thank you, Tanner. Thank you very much.
Last item on the agenda is uh, Michael Hefty, 1170 Hillside Road in Fairfield for property located at 1170 Hillside Road in Fairfield for A, remove existing asphalt roof and B, a new cedar roof. Is there anyone here to represent 1170 Hillside? Okay, I guess no one is here to represent 1170 Hillside, so we're gonna to have to move on the agenda. Um, <clears throat> to considerations of the public hearing items, and we'll start with first item. Uh, David J and Elizabeth Ives for 411 Harbor Road in South Fork for property located at 411 Harbor Road in South Fork for a, a, a low dry stack stone wall around previously approved auxiliary parking and B remove fence on retaining wall. Would anyone like to make a motion? I motion. This is, this is, uh, go ahead, Darren. I'll second it. All right. So what's the motion? So what's the motion? I motion to I accept. Motion to as, accept as, I can't hear you. It's too much. Uh, I can't hear you. Too uh, much uh, uh, reverberation. Uh, Art, you're gonna have to turn up here. Sorry. Go ahead. I motion to approve as submitted. Thank you. Art will second that. Second. Thank you, Art. Discussion. Okay. Um, I'll yeah, take a vote all in favor. Sorry. I'm sorry. Chris. Yeah, just, just go ahead. Yeah, just quickly. I was, I was a little bit concerned about the, um, the removal of that wrought iron fence where that tall wall is. I mean, it seems like, I guess from a HDC perspective, it, it's, uh, it's a nice looking fence and it, um, it serves a purpose as a kind of a guardrail. I don't know what others think of that. Well, Jack said there's a, a planting bed that provides a large buffer from people walking over it. I don't, I mean, I don't have an issue with it coming down. I've seen a bunch of Charles Cutler houses and none of them have anything that looks like that. Um, I know that you have to get on a case by case basis. I don't know that I think it's the wrought iron fence is completely appropriate. I don't know how it was designated originally that being said, um, but I don't have a problem with it coming down. Okay. Okay. So let's take a vote <clears throat> all in favor. Jim, are you voting? Jim? Can't hear you, Jim. Just give me a thumbs up if you're approved, Jim. Yes? No? I can't see. <laughs> yeah, he's waving. He's <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, all opposed, none, so the motion passes unanimously. <clears throat> okay, second item, Sam Carr. Okay, I'm, I'm recused on this item. Would you like me to read it, uh, Chris? I can read it. Next item is uh, okay. Samuel, Samuel, Samuel Cargill, Samuel. 144 Westway Road in Southport. Item A, new fences. Item B, new built-in grill with stone base. Item C, extend bluestone terrace. Item D, new stone wall. And item E, new stone fireplace. And I'm looking for a motion on this application. Uh, 
I'll uh, make a motion to approve items A, B, C, D, and E as presented. Excellent. And do we have a second? Um, and I, I don't know um, which um, alternates are, I guess everyone's voting on this because Adam's recused. Okay. Oh, George wasn't, George wasn't here though. So it's just, uh, so we need a second on this motion. I'll make a second to open discussion. Yeah. Thank you. Any discussion? I don't know, excuse me, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. I am a little bit confused. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to talk over anyone. I'm a little bit confused what can actually be viewed from the public way. Because there seems to be a lot of elements that might not actually be within the view shed from the public way street or place and therefore may fall outside our jurisdiction. It's unclear to me. Typically, that's a, what, that's a good typically. point because a lot of the stuff, the 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 grill and the the fire pit, and over there, I, I I've been to that home many times, and that that stuff's not visible from a public. Close the door. Close the door. Take it off. I can't hear. It may be visible from the walkway to the church, and that's a public way. Because the fencing. <laughs> Oh, why would it be a oh. why would it be a public way if it's an easement? Easements are private. If it's a if it's a walkway to the church, um, and it, and it's an easement, and and the and the citizens can use it, it's a public way. But I think the applicant think was the saying. Applicant was saying <laughs> sorry, there's like a um. The applicant was saying what's going to be viewable from that walkway is going to be the cedar fencing or the, the fencing that he's putting in. I can't remember if he said it was cedar. Um, and if that's the case, that's going to really obstruct the view of whatever's in the backyard. Okay, the application is for those five items and the motion is to approve those five items as presented. And we have a second on it. So we either, I think we should vote on it as it's motioned. And then um, if, if someone wants to not approve it, then we can take another motion. So um, I'd like to call the question. Uh, Good idea, all Chris. Those, all those in favor of approving this motion as presented, please uh, signify by raising your hand. And those opposed? Okay, so um, we have um, Darren opposed and three in favor, and George was not present for this application. So the motion carries as uh, made. Adam, you're up if you're, if you're okay. online. Thank you, thank you. Um, next item on the agenda is Pequot Yacht Club, 647 Harbor Road in Southport, for property located at 647 Harbor Road in Southport, to A, replace second floor porch guardrail with new guardrail. Would someone like to entertain a motion? If you can hear me now, I'd like to, to move to approve as presented. Sure, Jim. Second. I'll second that again, Art. Art seconds. Discussion. It's better than Personally, it was. I think it's a much better. Yeah. It's much better. I mean, it's much better. It looks, uh, and I think the idea that they have the, you know, more panels on a lot, you know, more of those. Uh, squares and X's, those panels, 
and the longer sections is to keep them proportionally the same. You know, if they kept the same number, they'd be longer and possibly they wouldn't be able to get it to work for the, for, for the code. But um, I'm a little upset that they tore the whole thing down before they got approval, but what are you gonna do? So I just had a question and this has more to do with code and maybe Adam, you might know. It seems like they've kind of created a ladder with those bottom rails and I don't know that this does meet that 42 inch minimum height if they've, if they've got the bottom rails that you can step on. Yeah, I mean, I was under the impression that you weren't that you know you weren't allowed to do that for a commercial guardrail, but um, they seem to think they can get away with it. I mean, if it's not code compliant, then they're not going to be able to build it. You know, um, so I guess there the thing is maybe there's there's it, it's a you know the space in between those is small enough that. You know, you can't really climb it. I don't know. I don't know. I guess we have to assume anyway. that the building department is going to deal with that and we're just looking at it for appropriateness. <coughs> yeah. So, any other comments? All right. Let's, uh, all in favor? All opposed, none, motion passes unanimously. Next item on the agenda is the Pequot Yacht Club, 669 Harbor Road in South Fork for property located at 669 Harbor Road in South Fork for A, new brick entry piers with small section of salad board fencing, stone apron, and one-way entrance into parking lot, including new plantings along Harbor Road. Can I get a motion? I moved into. Moved into... Can you hear me? Who's that? Uh, Darren. Darren. I motion to Darren accept Darren. as pre presented. I'll second that. Jim seconds. So, um, all, I, any, any, any uh, discussion? Yes, Chris. Uh, Adam, so, do you um, want to? Uh, so, do you want to add a? Oh, I apologize, Chris. Go ahead. Sorry, I was just going to say oh, yeah. that um, it it doesn't say this anywhere in the application, but during the presentation, uh, we were told that the existing um, entryway was going to become, uh, I guess, exit only. An exit. And the new and the new proposed is going to be uh, an entrance. Um, I don't know, I mean, we're not going to be able to manage that and I, I don't know um, if that really matters and if they're going to put like one way signs up or what's going to happen there. But do we want to stipulate something about that or I'm um, just your thoughts on that? Um, no, I don't think we need to stipulate anything. I mean, it's, it's, um, that's a good point that they might have to put up a sign to keep people from going in that entrance. That was going to be um, my one question. Gonna, I mean, how's that handled? Yeah, I mean, if they if they put up a sign without, they're going to have to come to us. I mean, obviously, so um, they're not going to be able to put up a sign that says, you know, do not enter or exit only or whatever um, without coming to us first. Um, so, I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I think the design is great. I really like it. It's, it's attractive. <laughs> Um, I just, I worry about the, the neighbor directly across from that new um, way out of the property with headlights, if, if they do in fact start, you know, using that a well, lot. Well, that's, that's a, a, re a real estate office, it's a commercial building. There might be something that's a new way in. Form, but that shouldn't. Well, actually, I think it, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do we I mean, want to stipulate right now, uh, that's, about that's right now? Way, Sorry. That's a way. 
that that right now that 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 one entrance is used to come in and out. So it's nothing's changing. You know, we're not changing any any. They're not changing any um, anything that's not happening already. Well, as long as they only enter the new way, it won't change anything. But if they start leaving the new way, it will add uh, headlights to the neighbor across the street. Right, but well, the whole idea, you know, what they they're probably going to end up putting something on the in in the on the drive, you know, like in the uh, on the driveway inside that says, you know, an arrow on the ground that says, that you, you know, this is the way you go. Um, and the members are being made aware of the situation um, and how to use it. So, if anyone does it, it's not going to be the you know the membership. It'll be a guest who makes a mistake. Okay, thank you. And I'm I'm sorry. I'm um, sorry, uh, Arthur, uh, Arthur. You were talking before. Oh, I I'm sorry, Chris. I I just I think there was some discussion about the apron and granite versus uh, um, bluestone. Do we want to stipulate that it's going to be bluestone? <coughs> yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, I, yeah. I think that's important because it's big what they, they they put on there for stone. So um Karen, do you mind do you mind amending your your uh motion to include that stipulation? It's bedtime here at the lock household, so it got really loud for a second. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sorry, I did not hear what just happened. I'm happy you, to amend. A, a question about remember there's there's a, a question about the material, the threshold between the, the street and the parking area, and mm -hmm. it's called out a stone. And um they they said that they were willing to do bluestone as opposed to, you know, maybe bluestone, maybe granite. They agreed to blue So you stone want to stipulate bluestone. Truck. Yeah. All right. So I move to amend the motion. To stipulate that, um, let me just scroll up. Where is it? That um, the the entrance use bluestone rather than granite. Okay. Is that okay? Yep. Okay. Jim, do you want to second that? <laughs> Um, yes, sure. Okay. All right, let's take a vote on that. Um, all in favor? All opposed? No opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Next item on the agenda is Hardy and Jennifer Royal, 720 Old Post Road in Fairfield for property located at 720 Old Post Road in Fairfield for a new 16 by 38 in ground fiberglass pool with granite patio, fencing, and lighting. <laughs> Can I have a motion, please? <clears throat> I'll motion to approve just to kick things off. So, Jim? Second? I'll, sec I'll second it, Adam. Second by Art. Okay. Discussion? Um, I, I it's, it's cool. have this. Oh, sorry. Chris, you can go first if you want. Go ahead, dear. Oh, um, I, again, okay. I'm a little bit confused what is viewable from the public way street or place. But the house itself is set back considerably from the road and the lot is long and thin. 
And I'm not sure how much of this is actually within our jurisdiction. Hmm. Well, like, and what, what do you think is not in our jurisdiction? I don't know that you can see a lot of what they're proposing. I'm pulling up the application now, so I'm actually looking at it. I don't know that you'll be able to see the pool, for example, from, from the public road. It's directly behind the house. The house is set back as it is, and I don't think that there's good sight lines. Well, if, um, Hey, it is uphill. And there's a lot of vegetation in front well, of the house. So it was hard to see if there's a fence or, or anything else there that prohibits viewing, prohibits the view shed. Well, but I mean, the road up the driveway has a lot of vegetation, big trees. It's just not easy to see. Right. And therefore, I think we have to assume that it can be seen because we can't, we can't um, use the foliage as, we can't count the foliage as being. Right. No, 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 I understand that. But even despite the foliage, I think it's set so far back from the house. I don't know if anybody would see an in-ground pool. I don't know that it's viewable because it's directly right. behind the house. I could totally be wrong, but that was my gut reaction when I drove by. Well, with the pool comes a pool fence mm -hmm. and, and the lighting, so. The fence um, and the lighting, I won't argue. Yeah, it's on the application, so it's whether yeah. whether it's it's actually visible. They didn't come to us asking to um, build this pool because and, and get approval. I mean, I, if they wanted to, um, I could have gone out there and said it's not visible. Um, and therefore, you don't have to include it in your in your plan. But um, that's not I think the fencing and the lighting you know. is viewable. I think yeah. that definitely is within jurisdiction. I just question about the pool itself. That's all I'm asking. Yeah. Well, it's on the application, so we're we are um, we're going to vote on it. Um, my concern is the uplights. I mean, I think we need to um, <laughs> deny the lights. Although they didn't break it out in light items, but they they didn't break it out. It's all one application. Yeah. So I mean, we could. Uh, we, I mean, we could approve it and. You know, as as presented um, with the stipulation that the you know the up lights um, be emitted, the MR16 bullet light. There's also those tiki torch lights. Yes, the tiki torch lights. That's another one. I think those would have to be. Um, removed as well. I mean, we've never had those. I don't know. There's no precedent for that one. At this point. It is natural light, though. I mean, it's sort of, um. I guess what's inappropriate about it, you know. But they're not hard hardwired. No, they are hard word. Oh, they are. There's like a, I, I think there's a lighting mechanism in there that that's that's what the wires are for. Okay. We're yeah, they, to, it um, says they're they're LED lamps. LED. Yeah, the, the touch sheet has them as uh, the lamps are LED, three watt, fifty five degree, twenty seven to three thousand K. Oh, you're talking about which ones? No, oh, yeah. under the tiki. The, the tiki lights. 
Yeah, that's strange because it looks like it's a flame with smoke coming off. Yeah, of it. that that's the most that's the most flame like looking uh, LED I've ever seen. Yeah, uh, there's two pictures. One of them has, you know, it looks like a kind of a bright light coming off of them, and the other one has like smoke coming off of it. Yes. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's kind of vague. Um, <clears throat> well, <clears throat> because they're not, they're not um, separated from the pool. I'm not sure in the rest of the application. It's, it's going to be tricky to deny just the lighting. We can make three different motions, or two different motions, and consider the lighting separate from the other two pieces of the application. No, you can't. It's because it's one item. It's a uh -huh. new, it's it, they're, they're separate items, but it's all under one one line item. Uh -huh. um, yeah, it it was noticed as one item, so we have to act on it as one item. Yeah, we could stipulate that the lighting is is be excluded from the application. That's the only thing we could do if we wanted to move forward with with that without denying the entire application, which I think might be. You know, not not the best best thing to do. I mean, just I can I can see them coming back for the lights, um, but I don't see I don't have any problem with the pool and the fence and the plantings. I know I I think we should stipulate also in addition to possibly um, excluding the lighting is the is that the the plantings and around the pool fence uh, be maintained in perpetuity. To hide the fence. What do you think? Well, I think that's a, I think, because I'm not really happy with the fence either in, in that neighborhood. It doesn't, it doesn't really look um, appropriate. I think the, the the intention from them is, from what I understood, is that it was going to be hidden by that, you know, this this planting, uh, you know, here. You know, so it'd be pretty thick, and it should hide the fence. Mm. But I think we should spell it out just to make sure that it gets done. You know, stipulate it. So, if we're going to move forward with that stipulation, I think uh, Jim, you're going to have to amend your your um, your motion. Amended to, in perpetuity, have uh, landscaping. Masking the fence, and do we want to confine our objections to the TV lights, or do we want to object to all the lighting? I think they should come back with all the lighting because, you know, there's there's two, there's up lighting and there's tiki lights, and so okay, now we're okay. just you know picking, picking through, and we just might as well you know deny the you know deny the lighting in general. Lighting. Okay. Okay, so I, I will amend my motion to uh, add a stipulation to mask the fence with the vegetation in perpetuity, number one. And number two, to delete lighting from this application and to be, lighting is to be considered, an application for appropriate lighting is to be considered separately. 
Okay. Thank you. Would you like to second that? Yeah, I'll second that. You are? Okay, very, very good. Very, very good. All right, let's take a vote. All in favor? All opposed? Motion passes. Wait a second. We have. Is Jim voting on this one? It was my motion, and, and I voted in favor. Okay, so the motion passes three to two. Jeez, can't count. Um, myself, Jim, and Art are four, and um, Chris and Darren are opposed. No abstentions. Okay, next item on the agenda is Gerald D. Gabriel Bur and Gabrielle Berto, 494 Harbor Road in Southport for property located at 494 Harbor Road in Southport for A, entrance gate fencing along Harbor Road, B, realign bluestone path with porch to side entrance, C, remove removal of welded wire mesh within hedges on property, D, removal of fence driveway gates and parking courtyard, E, install new picket fence along Rose Hill and into parking courtyard, F, Realign gravel parking courtyard and add Ryerson metal edge to hold gravel. G, add stone apron between gravel parking courtyard and existing asphalt driveway. And H, new bluestone <laughs> steps at existing bluestone landing. <clears throat> Can I get a motion? Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll move to uh, approve uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H as presented. I'll second. Thank you. <clears throat> Discussion? Yeah, hi, Chris. Well um, laid out. It's, a, it's a nice application. I just had a, a comment on the gate, which, by the way, I think is beautiful, but it's higher than the adjacent fence. And our guidelines talk about gate height should be equal to or slightly lower than adjacent, and then it says stone walls. But I'm wondering why the gate couldn't be the same height as the fence. Hmm. You know, just a kind of a scaling question. I, I think it looks beautiful. <clears throat> I like that teardrop effect, but um, it does say in our guidelines on page 61 that the gate height should be a equal to or slightly lower than adjacent. And then it, it says stone wall, so I don't really know. That might be a Darren thing on the, you know, update of the guidelines, but um, I don't know why it's taller than the adjacent fence. Yeah, um, good question. As you mentioned, I tend to agree. Anyone else feel strong about this? I mean, It is in our guidelines. I think Chris, our guidelines. I mean, Chris is right. I mean, if it's in the guidelines, we got to address it. The 
you know, the question is, yeah. Uh, yeah. since it's a guideline, do we, you know, do we look the other way? But, you know, it, it, it's certainly a legitimate point. I mean, I don't mind the way it looks, yeah, but way it looks, perhaps, but perhaps it could be a little shorter. It could be a little shorter. Can we cure that with a stipulation approved um, with the stipulation that the, the, the gate and those posts be the same height as the, the adjacents? Yeah, that's a good way to handle it. Because it, I mean, it is a nice elevation. Um, nothing wrong with the design, except that, that the, we have this little issue with the height. You want to make a stipulation? That's a stipulation art. Yeah. So I would I would amend the. Uh... I would amend the uh, the motion, Adam, to um, state that uh, items um, A through H are um, approved as presented with the stipulation that the uh, the gate and uh, the uh, what are those called posts? Yeah, posts. Yeah, posts. Yeah. So the stipulation would be uh, uh, that the uh, the the gate. The gate height and the, the the gate posts um are um equal to the uh the adjacent uh fence. That's how I would word it. Okay. Or not to exceed. Um I would I maybe the, the better way to say it is that the gate and the uh uh the gate posts um the height of those um shall not exceed the uh um, the height of the, uh, the adjacent fence, since that's sort of what the, uh, the guidelines said as, as Chris read them. I think I'm okay. playing tricks on me, but, but did she say that the, the shrubbery would cover that fence? And if so, no. No, no back, it's not going to cover Did she present a photograph of the gate and the existing shrubbery? I don't remember. This is what they're doing. This is what they're doing here. But what, did, did she attach a photograph of that gate? She has, she has a drawing of it. Well, I thought there was a photograph too. <clears throat> There is not, not the on number nine, Adam. Number yeah. nine, yeah. Oh, the, there's the gate the, as existing. existing. That's yeah, what I think now, Jim was asking yeah, about. Yeah, now, now okay. that gate is lower than the sur surrounding shrubbery. So I think that might address um, the objection. No, the, we're, we're, the, the, the discussion is about the gate. Okay. Um, I think it. I think it's about the gate with respect to the adjacent fence. Um, is it, it, yeah. But is the fence going to be visible? Yes. Yes. That's what she's drawn, and that's what the plan shows. Okay. Okay. If that's the case, then I agree with the objection. Good catch. Good catch. Darren, would you like to um, second that stipulation? Yeah, I'll second. Amended motion. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Second. Any, any other discussion? All right. We'll take a vote. All in favor? All opposed? Not opposed. Motion passes, passes unanimously. Okay, next item on the agenda is Richard Mervis, 249 Old South Road and South Fork, property located 
and 249 Old South Road in Southport 4A install pool gate and welded wire mesh fence from house to property line along Old South Road evergreen shrubs in front of welded wire mesh. B install six foot cedar privacy fence along east and north property lines. C install 18 by 35 pool and rear side yard pool down 18 inch bluestone coping. D install double pool gate and garage. E repair or replace where necessary existing picket fence and gates along property line and F add shutters to restore windows. Can I get a motion? <clears throat> Uh, it's Chris. I'll make a motion to approve items A, C, D, E, and F, and to deny item B without prejudice because it's a stockade fence that's been proposed and that's inappropriate for our guidelines. We have a second? I'll second that. That's Art. Art seconds. Um, discussion. Um, no, I think that was Jim. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Jim, thank you. Jim seconds. Discussion. Okay, if there's no discussion, we'll take a vote. All in favor? All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Uh, next item on the agenda is Brandon and Katie Konovitz, 225 Old South Road in Southport, uh, for property located at 225 Old South Road in Southport. Um, the motion is to expand, sorry, the motion. Uh, Your, George was here for this one? Okay. Okay. Um, Just giving you a heads up. To expand gravel driveway. Thank you. Expand gravel driveway with matching gravel and reclaimed granite planks with steel edging. B, sock out existing pool terrace and install new granite terrace and spa. C, install field stone wall and seat wall adjacent to new spa terrace. D, Landscape lighting in pool spa area and E stepping stones in front of hornbeam hedge at pool gates. And George will be voting on this, and Jim, you will not be voting on this. Okay. Can I get a motion? I'll move to uh, approve um, those items as presented. Thank you. And I'll make a motion. And I'll, I'll, make a motion second that. That. I'll second that. George seconds. George seconds. Discussion? Discussion? Adam, could you pull up the Adam? Could you pull again? up the application again? Never mind, I can do it. Never mind, I can sure. do it. I can do sure. it. What is this? Two twenty-five old post road. What is this? Two twenty-five old post road. Yep. Yep. Old Old South Road. Old South Road. Sorry, that's what I. Meant. I'm sorry. Sorry, we'll that's what I, meant. I. I brought it up. She said the sauna. She said the, the sauna and the spa was flush. Correct? Was flush. Correct. 
Yes. Yes. This area. This area. There's a terrible echo again. There's a terrible Close. echo again. Close. I know that's arts. Oh, the um, this this wall is tall, and then this wall is short. I don't know how appropriate that would be. Should those hedges ever move, or come out? <clears throat> well. I know this this uh these this pool fencing requires you know it's a it's a met, it's a wire fence so it has to be totally screened like this. Okay. I mean you don't I guess you don't have to have the horn beams, but it'll always have it'll always be screened with uh you know something that let me see. Okay, as long as you it's know, always gonna be here, screened, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, it looks like they're getting rid of that one huge horn, horn beam, um, which is too bad because it's beautiful. Where? Which one? Oh, you mean over here? They were taking out two those hemlocks. Are, those are hemlocks. Yeah. Those are two hemlocks. Um, go to the yeah, go to the picture yeah, and see how they're the, taking out the, these here. The, no, the middle horn beam is coming out. That's set back. It's, I think that's I think that's coming one? out because it's in the way of the spa. Yeah. No, that's oh, they're, they're taking no, the middle one out and stepped back. And they're putting some, some smaller shrubs in there, I think. No, that's not. There's no way that's going. I know it, that that was not part of her. I mean, she they're, they're showing right here. Okay, you're absolutely right. They're, they're not coming out. I mean, they would they would never. Those are too beautiful. Both, and she even said so. You know, they're really mature and well maintained and all that. But they are change. They are doing something here. New evergreen screening over here in the corner. Yeah, that's okay. They, she said she was going to do some large arborvitaes there. I'm okay with that. Yeah, yeah. So that's this she section the hemlock here. Yeah. 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 All right, can we take a vote? All in favor? All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Um, next item on the agenda is Michelle and Andrew Adams, 564 Harbor Road in Southport for property located at 564 Harbor Road in Southport for two new exterior sconces and Jim, you will be voting on this one. I have to recuse myself for this one. Never mind. Jim and George will both be um, voting on this one. Sorry, I forgot. Okay. Yep. So, do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve and present it. And I'll second that. I'll motion. second that motion. And George seconds. Jim first. Next motion and George seconds. Discussion? I think they look fine and appropriate. Okay. Yeah, Adam, I, I would leave that up to you more than me. I, I don't really understand the architecture of these lights. If, if they seem awful gothic for this particular house, but um, I'm going to assume that it's appropriate to me. I, I can't say whether it is or not. I think they're pretty simple, you know. Um, because they're, they're because they're so, you know, such a simple looking 
fixture. I don't I don't think you can really say they're heavily Gothic or federal style or you know. That's my take anyway. All right, should we take a vote? All in favor? All opposed? Chris? I'm going to um, not vote uh, either way. Abstain? Yeah, I'll abstain okay. on this one. So the motion passes four to one. Chris is abstaining. Uh, next item on the agenda is um, Mr. and Mrs. Robert Wright, 260 Harbor Road in South Fork, for property located at 260 Harbor Road in South Fork for a new landscape lighting, B, change previously approved bronze railing cap on exterior railings to, to painted steel to match posts, C, existing stone steps pre previously approved to be rebuilt to remain, D, new railing along sidewalk between residents and street previously approved to be omitted. And Jim, you'll be voting on this one. Okay. Can I get a motion, please? Motion to approve as submitted. Second. Second. I'll second it, Art. Seconds discussion. Yeah, I I would vote against that motion because I believe there are um, way too many landscape lights proposed, and the ones in the trees and the the you know they're down lights, they're up lights. Um, we've denied um, proposals for lighting with far less lights in them than than this one has. So I'd like to. Um, have uh, them reconsider the amount of lighting and the overall um, plan. I agree. <clears throat> Any other comments? Discussion? And should we take a vote? All in favor? All opposed? Extensions? All opposed? Uh, the motion does not pass. And carry fails. So I'd like to I'd like to um, present a new motion. That, that okay. um, items B, C, and D be approved as submitted, and that item A be denied without prejudice. Second, I'll second I'll that. Second that I'll too. Second that. Okay. Was that Art? Was Art and Jim? Was Art and Jim? Hey. I don't know. Yeah, what's give there. it a turn. Okay. Art seconds. Um, discussion. I guess we've had discussion. Any more discussion? Okay, we'll take a vote. All in favor? All opposed? Any abstain? Motion passes unanimously. <clears throat> Next item is Haley and Christopher Milligan, 75 Old South Road in Southport. The property located at 75 Old South Road in Southport for A, a two, new two story structure with attached three car garage, and B, new pool and terrace. And George, you're on this one. Can we get a motion?
A motion to approve as presented. Yeah, and and I would okay. second that. And I would second. Okay, Art is motions to approve as presented, and George seconds. <clears throat> Any discussion? Uh, yeah, Chris here. Um, I'm uncomfortable with this application. Um, I I feel like um, the existing structure um, in a designated historic district should um, there should be a a really good attempt to retain that um, and I I'd like to um, I I would vote against that motion because of that. I, I agree. I think that um, this is a structure in a designated district and I think it bears a discussion with at least Shippo and the architectural historians up there to see if there's any other ways to mitigate the issues that they're having with this addition. Um, the tax credits could could help, um, but they, they Shippo is used to seeing this. so. Um, I'm really hesitant to to approve something that says this house can get torn down and rebuilt in kind. Who is uh, Shippo? Sorry, State Sorry. Historic State Preservation Historic Office. State Historic Preservation Office. Oh, okay. Um, I, I would disagree, uh, you know, whether or not it should be torn down or not, but the tax credit issue isn't relevant to our um, you know, it's, 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 it's not really it's, just it's good information. Tax credit. Tax credit. But it's not, yeah, it wouldn't, I wouldn't. Consider that as part of our deliberation, just oh, saying go get no, a tax credit. But I think that Shippo is used to dealing with issues like this and mitigating issues. And in um, this is just a local designation; it's not national, is it? No. Oh. I, I, it's a state. Um, it's a state. It's it's under the. It's state. just state. It's mm -hmm. not national not too. I, I just think it might be it might be a great idea to. Um, just pause on this application and maybe um, seek some guidance from the the state um, preservation officials and maybe discuss this further with the applicant. Um, um. I'm not opposed to that, but but just for for their purposes, what you know. It, we don't really pause things, but you know, we give it an up or down vote, or um, we do stipulations or deny without prejudice. I'd just be interested on in what they should be consulting Shippo about. Shippo is used to helping homeowners stabilize buildings that are in need of repair or have structural issues, or they work with homeowners to protect the houses that are listed and designated either in national, state, or local districts. So I think it would so bear think it would bear a generalized conversation with them to see what they could recommend and they might even be able to tell the homeowners these people have massive experience doing just this. Maybe you should talk to them and see what their take is. That kind of thing. Do they, like do they have the, the same hey, sir, sir. Just to kind of further my my comments to just to give you a little more context. The application doesn't mention demolish existing home on it. And um, I think that would have been helpful to see in the application. Um, and it, although it, it does kind of in a roundabout way, we figure out that the existing structure is going to be demolished. In, in my time on the Historic District Commission, which is quite a while now, we have not demolished a home in any of the districts. So I'm a little bit hesitant to go ahead and approve this. Okay, thanks for yeah, that. That's demolished I, homes in the I didn't I didn't I didn't know any of that. I just, you know, my point was if if Shippo has expertise that or or they have resources that whoever they consulted <laughs> that they couldn't uh you know, it would cost $300,000 if, if, if they could be helpful in that conversation. I'm okay with it. 
That's why I said the tax credit, because the people that to talk to up at SHIPO are the same ones who are in charge of that program. That's those are the those are the two that do this. So they would be the point of contact. And I'm, like I'm totally Shippo fine with that. Maybe, it sounds like Shippo. That's maybe fine. I just didn't Shippo want. I didn't want the tax credit thing to be like, well, you've got this opportunity. No, no, no. So no, 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 no it, was it. More, it was those are the people to talk to because they're the one. Usually, when you, in my experience, when I've come across a situation like this, the people that are looking at this didn't know about the tax credits, and I end up interfacing with SHPO to help them just discuss and the tax credits become, it's like inseparable in my head, but I shouldn't have put it that way. The people who do this securing and can help are the ones that are in charge of the tax credit program as well. Okay. They, you, I usually see this kind of thing in that context. That's all. Okay, like thank you both for that. Something. It sounds like it may be more, SHPO may be more for um, historic structures that are that are um, somehow uh, you know um, have structural issues just because of age, right? They're not necessarily. Down, in this particular case, well, in this particular case, they're creating the issues. Not, they want to build a garage, and that's what the that's what's causing the structural issue, potential structural issue. It's not that you know the the um, building is compromised because of uh, old age, you know, the timber frames are, are rotting and therefore they need to be shored up or the foundation is crumbling from because it's a rubble foundation and therefore, you know, they need to figure out how to how to fix that. It's like they're they want to build a garage and the ground doesn't is, is kind of poor quality ground because they're in a you know right in the wet uh, wetlands, you know. So, you know, for them to it's like a it's like a self inflicted issue. They don't, you know, what, you know, they just want a third car, a bigger garage or something, you know, it's not like, um, it, the house is in any peril at the moment. Right. And uh, yeah, and I don't think the tax credit thing is really should even come into play. I mean, they didn't, they didn't come saying that they were looking to, you know, to save some money. They, they, they want to do it the way they want to do it. We're, we're just here to say, you know, this is appropriate or it isn't. And um, I'm questioning that. Not, it has nothing to do with it's money. Hard to deny, it's hard to say whether it's appropriate. Or not. It's really, you know, they want to rebuild an ex basically the same house. So how's that inappropriate? You know, it's it, that that part's a little tricky to to determine. It's not a, it's not an historic structure. You know, from a from a perspective of age, it's a it's a, a structure so, that exists in the historic district um, as is. And so that's what we're here yeah. to preserve. That's our job. That's our job. Okay, well, I'm okay with all that, but that might be another item for uh, for Darren for the, the guidelines, because, uh, you know, this won't be the first time perhaps that someone's looking to demolish <laughs> something. So if, if uh, you know, if, if we feel strongly oh. about that, oh. that should be addressed. We have, we have, we have yeah, approved we have, demolition, have in approved demolition in the past, you know? Oh, okay. You know? All right. Right down at the, right if, you, down if you drive to the end of old stuff, that, that white Greek revival, that, that was a, that was, that was the yellow house previously and it was demolished. I just heard Chris, I'm sorry. I apologize. I just heard Chris say, and I, I know Chris has been here a long time and I just, I was under the impression yeah. we don't approve yeah. demolitions to demolitions. No, no, I said I no, haven't. No, I, said I haven't. On the commission. On the commission. And it, okay. There hasn't been one. There hasn't. There hasn't. Sorry for the echo. Sorry for the echo. There hasn't. No worries. I just. Okay. As long as, as long as it's all accurate. So, uh, should we take a vote on this? We need more discussion. Can you read the motion again? Okay. It's it's to approve um, A and B, the new new two story structure with attached three car garage, and the B, new pool and terrace. I also have a little issue with the fact that it doesn't say demolish existing structure. So, I mean, 
I, I'm, I'm leaning towards um, voting against this application just to be forthcoming. So can we take a vote? George, you're voting on this? Jim, you're not voting on this? I'm voting on this, yes. So all in favor? All in favor? All opposed? Motion fails. <clears throat> so we'll just take a new motion. I'll make a motion, Adam, to, to um, deny um, A and B with, without prejudice. I'll second that. Guess we don't need any more discussion unless anyone feels the need. Um, so we'll take a vote. All in favor? All opposed? None opposed. Motion passes unanimously. And the last item on the agenda is uh, Michael Atefi, 1170 Hillside Road in Fairfield for property located 1170 Hillside Road in Fairfield for A, remove existing asphalt roof and B, new cedar roof. There was nobody here to present make, the application, but that doesn't mean we can. Uh, I'll make a motion to deny uh, as, um, I'll make a motion to deny the application because it wasn't presented. So deny without prejudice. Okay, second. Yeah, I'll second that too. <clears throat> discussion? No discussion. Okay. So we'll take a vote. All in favor? And all opposed? Unopposed? So motion passes unanimously. All right. It's one of the longer agendas we've had in a while, huh? It's, it's, yes, sir. Um, okay, just moving on quickly. Approval of minutes from uh, February 11th. Bohan, Gravanis, Clark, Stack, and Negron. So this is not here. And um, Rosina's not here. We have one, two, three, four. We have enough to vote on it. So I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second that. I'll second that. So the motion I'll make the motion. motion. George can present okay. a second. Oh, I'm sorry. Our motion is to approve and George seconds. And all in favor? Chris? Oh, Chris wasn't there, sorry. I wasn't there. And that's it. Motion passes. All right, Chairman's report. We have um, repairs at 801 Old Post Road. Chair repair existing fence is required with painted like materials. 780 Harbor Road replaced existing generator with similar generator. Violations, 480 Old Post Road. That's the uh, Sherman Parsonage and they are issued a violation for um, for that fence that they wow. put in the cedar fence on the right side of the house. They never had, they never got permission to remove the, the chain link fence and then they installed a wood fence and the neighbors complained. So we had to hold them to that and um, make them come in to apply to remove and also the arbor, which he has still come in for approval. So hopefully he will come in and do that soon. Um, old business handbook. I'm in the process of going through stuff. Um, Rosina just sent okay. me some things like five days ago, so I'm working my way through them. I was also really sick in February, so progress was slow. Okay. Did you get Did you get Jim's uh, notes as well? Yeah, I got Jim's. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Great. Thank you. And then, then based on tonight's um, what we what we went through tonight with the with, in particular with the second to last application, that might be another. Thing we want to address it and clarify, you know, that and the fence thing with the stone walls as opposed to 
you know, maybe we need to clarify that as well. Some additional things to think of. Sure. And then finally, uh, 1040 South, um, I'm in the process of, of issuing, you know, doing a, putting a lien on the property and issuing, um, issuing uh, fines. So I wanted to get the approval of the commission to um, to do that. I'm uh, sorry, Adam. What's the address? Uh, 104 Old South. It's a, it's the one where we've had all the we had a, maybe you were on the commission yet. Um, okay, we had uh, 104 Old South um, did a number of things. They put in skylights. They put in windows. They put in that, that they, they came to us for approval and then they, when they put, actually put the windows in, they put in completely different windows. You know, they got, they got double homes approved and they put in casements. They had a certain kind of uh, skylight approved and they put in a different type. Um, the shed yeah, in the back they've them. raised uh, about a foot. Um, and there are a couple other smaller items like the shutters were when they, when they changed the shut, they replaced the shutters. They screwed them, they screwed them to the house as opposed to putting them over the windows so they don't look like they're operable. Um, they've been issued violations on all this in the past. It started um, last year and they've come back to us with certain things and some things have been improved and some things have not. Um, <clears throat> so, and they've just, they've gone radio silent. They haven't dealt with anything in, in months. Um, so, so I think it's time to, to to get them to come in and deal with, with these issues. Um, and so what I have to work with a town attorney and writing this um, the violations and figuring that out, but there's something in here. Let me just find it about um, So actions when illegal acts. So <clears throat> says that the offense is willful, the person convicted therefore shall be fined not less than one hundred dollars a day, not more than two hundred dollars. $250 for each day that, that such violation continues. Um, I would suggest um, a $200 a day fine at this point because it, it is willful. Um, the offenses have been completely willful um, and therefore I think deserve the highest fine. So, uh, Looking, looking for the thing. See what you guys all think about this. Um, if you approve, you agree. Thanks, thanks for all of your um, efforts on that, Adam. I, I think you've been very, questions. very patient, Adam. Well, yeah. So, um, I guess the, the town attorney feels as though. Um, there's no issue with imposing a monetary penalty. It's not up to him. It's, a, it's up to it us up whether to? we want to, whether it's justified. And and I think it's justified. And I just want to make sure that the commission agrees that it's justified. They don't want to go out there and, and, and impose fines when the commission thinks we should do something else. I mean, you guys are, are aware of how, how this whole thing has panned out, except for Darren, who wasn't present. Um, but, and the fact that they're not dealing with any of the issues now, and it's been months, um, I think he just wanted to go away and it's, and it's not going to go away. When would the fine, um, when would it, would it take place since the violation or since you impose it, uh, since, since you, I think since, when, since, it, since, since when it gets imposed. Okay, so we'll get start like, I mean, it's two hundred dollars a day. It's gonna add, it's gonna it's gonna add up, well, that's you know, quickly. And you know, I mean, these things they usually get forgiven after the fact. 
you know, the, I, I don't think what, if you get a $20,000 fine, the town's not going to hold you to that because you didn't do something. You know, I think if you, if you fix the situation, rectify the situation, they'll, they'll let the fine go. But it's an incentive to get them to come in and deal with it. Adam, do you give and, them um, a notice and, period? So you, do you say to them, you know, fine start in 10 days? What's the process? Uh, let me see. You, you got, you got 30 days to rectify the situation or the fine start. It might be 30 days. I have to, let me see. I mean, I know you've been patient for a year, but when you, when you usually with yeah. notification of a fine, you, you give somebody, you know, yeah. that means there's no more bullshit and it's, you know, the yeah. fine start in, you know, 30 days. Yeah. And that's most likely the case. Um, yeah. it, it gives you time to rectify. I mean, it's, a, it's a leak. Yeah. It's a legal issue, yeah. It's, and it's it's uh, so I'm sure there's there's certain. Here it is. Here's, uh, so on this particular one, it's an order to comply, and they had 60 days to remove, like to do to comply. In this particular case, but there's another one. Well, maybe it's my Did you build in a time period for notice in the letter? Excuse me? Did you build in a notice period in the letter saying, like, I the fines will start? Well, well, no, no, they, they, they've received violation letters and they were given 30 days. They've received two, I think, violation letters okay. over the last year and a half or so. And they were both given 30 days to come, to come and, you know, apply, reapply or do whatever or fix the issue. And they did. They came in um, and it was denied again what they did. Um, and so this has been going on. And, um, and then after the last time they came in and was denied, they they just stopped coming in. It's been like six months, I think, since okay. they've addressed it. Um, so yeah, the the order to comply or whatever the next uh, the, the the deed or the um, the lien on the properties would be. I would imagine they they get thirty to sixty days to to comply. So I guess before the fines. I don't know. Something I know like it's that. not. I mean the that that kind of notice period isn't laid out in the state statutes. So I don't know what general yeah. practice is. It's probably up to the, probably up to the attorney. Yeah. Or the town or whatever. So yeah. So anyway, so, if you guys uh, agree that this this is a good next next step, then we'll, we'll make that start the wheels in motion for that. Adam, how many violations are there? I don't know off the top of my head. There's at least. Uh, <laughs> At least three violations that, you know, the one that the, the big one is they raised the shed in the back and they, they didn't even get a variance for that, which they need. So that's that's one. Um, the windows in the back are another big one that were where they they came back to us several times to get those approved and and they were denied every time. And then the skylight they put um, skylights in the main house. Okay. And, yeah. I mean, and if this is another question. If we want to go after this, it's it's like they they put they took out the one the one existing skylight, and they put in four new ones. Right. You know, so they took out the three that they put in, but they didn't replace they didn't put the new one, back to where it exists where it, where it was approved to to be installed originally. So uh, you know, how far do you want to go? You know, it's it's um. And all these violations happened at once. I'm sorry, I just don't know the backstory. Or were they Over separate? A period of several months. Okay, so they were all separate they, COAs. It's been going on for probably 18 over. months. Yeah, and it accumulated. So when you sent the, the initial, and then we... sorry, go ahead. 
the the skylight. Yeah, was, it happened over. It was, yeah. Go ahead. Well, the skylight they 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 put up they put up the skylights and they came in I think two or three times to get us to re uh, to try and get us to accept the skylights that I think after our final time they they took out three of the four and left one but it wasn't the one where it wasn't where it originally was. Okay. And I think that's the last time we've seen them. But when you sent the violation letter, all of this was in one letter saying you violated this, you violated this, you violated this. Mm -hmm. So it was all yeah. grouped together. It wasn't like they had separate violation letters for each one of these issues. No, no. There was one violation letter that had had a list of items. Okay. And then there, then there were more items came later that so we had to issue another violation letter with additional items. <laughs> Okay, yeah. I, I get it. Now. I'm sorry. I just didn't know the yeah. backstory, so it was hard to understand. No, I get it. Yeah. No, I'm. I think you're well within. <laughs> obviously, you're well within the state statutes to do fines. And at this point, if they're non-compliant and the offense is willful, then by all means, I I agree that that's the logical next step. And I live two houses yeah. away. And I worried. Oh, sorry, George. Yeah. <laughs> And I, and I'm, and my worry is that that in in the not so distant future he's going to put the house in the market, and if we don't have him on record, he's going to be able to sell it in the state, and then it'll pass once it passes. You know, ownership. There's nothing we can do about it. Right. So. Mm -hmm. That's why that's why we need to sort of deal with it. Either you deal with it, or you you know we lose the right to deal with it at some point. You know, he decides he, to sell the house. He's in a house right across the street from the one that wants to get torn down. <laughs> I mean, Old yeah, South yeah. has turned in Old South has turned into a construction site. <laughs> it's like seven houses yeah. in two blocks. It's it's crazy. It's true. Look at the water down there. It's a hot street. Yeah, I mean, it's you can't it's hear the hammers nuts. after your after your work is done. George, you, you can hear the hammers. Yeah, and I wake up every morning to the beep, beep, beep at seven o'clock. Hey, so I had a couple of comments on this. Um, I'm all about like, you know, fairness and applying the, the laws or the regulations equally. And it seems to me that there are some other violations in town that have continued to remain kind of open items and I don't think we've done, we haven't imposed any fines on those. So I'm wondering, you know, which, what are you referring why, to? Good point. Why should, how do we, um, how do we be fair minded um, and mm. apply the, apply the standards, um, you know, to Chris, everybody. I'm not aware of any outstanding issues. I'm not, I'm not aware of any outstanding violations. I um, haven't been addressed. Okay, so I think, I mean, the big, the big one, I think, is the, the, unless I've missed something, the um, synthetic slate on the church roof. That um, is still kind of hanging oh, out no. there. Yeah, did, did that go? The... On congregational church? No, that's, that's, that's still an issue. Yeah, you're right. That's. Uh, yeah. And that's been yeah, what church? That's, that's been congregational. Congregational okay. church. Across from Old Town Hall. Oh, okay. They put on some, they put some set, synthetic road. slate in on the back on the back side of the church. Did they do it with the COA yeah. or without? Without them, so I'm with assuming. What? Did they yeah, didn't uh, get a yeah, COA yeah. for it? Yeah. They've tried to. They've and come in, violation, but that's been years. Yeah. Right. So that's just one off the top of my head. I, I, there's probably a few others, like with shutters, that haven't been appropriately dealt with. Shutters have been the shame on Willow Street. Yeah, there were a few other houses with shutters that received violations over the years, and I don't. Re I just don't know if they've been solved or not. One on the corner of Willow and Westway has been, they, they put the shutters back on and then the house sold actually, so it's changed hands. And the other one on the other side that removed all the shutters, the house sold with the shutters removed and therefore we can't do anything about it. So. And then there, and then there's that, a house. That, those are how those two have been. 
there's a house on the old post road that has like vinyl windows in it that um, I'm not sure. If okay, he's replaced. He's he's replacing them. We, he had the okay. old ones. I don't know if he's done it or not. I think Rosina. I think Rosina told me that he did. Do, he was doing something with it. So. Okay. Because she was she's her neighbor. His neighbor. Right. Yeah, so I'm just about being fair, and then and then my other my other thing is, you know, if you have a between 100 and 250 a day, you know, monetary fine. I mean, how do you how do you decide? Do we do the same amount for everybody, or is it, you know, is it more yeah. for a more egregious violation? And how do you how do you figure that out? Yeah, it seems subjective to me. Well, in this particular case, it, it was willful. He he was advised, and he knew exactly what he was doing. He he didn't you know, he was advised by me that he had to install things exactly the way that it was presented, and he couldn't change it. And he changed it. He just did whatever he wanted, and so and right. you know, so, and he he knew. I I was very clear with him on how on what he could and could not do, and. His, his, I know his position is that basically nobody's going to notice. And if nobody's going to notice, you know, they're not going to notice if I change the window a little bit because nobody notices it. And right. you know, so, no, I'm not denying, I'm not denying any of that. And I know how hard you've worked on this. I'm just, I'm, I'm just, um, I guess playing devil's advocate a little bit on it. You know, um, I want to make sure that we're protected. Um, and this doesn't blow up somehow. I have a question. Okay, I, can. I just have a question um, procedurally. Um, how do do how do final inspections work here? Yeah. No, there are no final inspections. There's not the no, the building not the building like inspector that. is supposed to the building inspector is supposed to be our final inspection, but. You know, they don't even have the plans to know what's supposed to be there and what's not supposed to be there. So it's sort of, it's on a more of an honor system that these things are getting done the way they're supposed to be, they're, the way they're approved. And the only times we find out is when either we drive by and notice that something's not done the way it was approved to be done, or a neighbor calls in and says so and so is doing something they shouldn't be doing, or they did. You know what I mean? It's either policed by the neighbors or, you know, we happen to come upon it and see a discrepancy. Is that something we can address in the handbook? Yeah, potentially, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, maybe have some ideas. Because other HDCs that I've worked with, um, and I know these are other HDCs, so it doesn't necessarily apply Fairfield, I know. But um, some yeah. of them, um, there's a, a section on the COA that needs a final inspection before it can be like approved and get a CO and do all the building stuff that it needs to do. So one of the members from the HDC, whoever happens to be free, you know, somebody follows up with the homeowners, is this done? And yeah. then when they say yes, somebody goes out with the plans that have been approved and signs off on it. And if there's any changes, <clears throat> then it becomes, well, you need to either get a retroactive COA or you need to come in and talk to us about it. And then it goes from there. So that might be something. I'm not saying that's the ideal situation in this case, but that might be something that the handbook could address, which would make this process a little bit easier to, to ensure that people are upholding what the HDC decides on every yeah. application. A lot of these applications. I think we would have to. Uh, I think we'd have to let the uh, the building department. We could come up with it, some ideas, but I, I'm not sure that's going to go in the in the handbook. I think that has to go in the the building department's uh, regulations. And one of the one of the one issues of the is, other, yeah, is yeah. a lot of these applications don't require a certificate of occupancy when when they're done. Like when you. When you right. when you fix a fence with PVC, the building department doesn't care about that. Right. And he's the enforcement ag agent for the town, the chief building inspector. But there's no CFO 
certificate of occupancy involved with that or even though there is a certificate of appropriateness, you know, built, the building department doesn't inspect it. Right, but, but in, in these other instances that I'm talking about, they do final inspections. And if, uh, if they see that the fence was replaced with PVC or AZAC instead of the wood that was approved, they can hold them for, they send yeah. out a notice of violation and then hold them for fines. So it's just, if, if, going forward this is going to become something that's everybody wants to be true and fair about and more enforceable there might have to be some structure to you know because you can't rely on word of mouth because you'll catch only a certain number of people rather than all of them so it, it just seems disproportionate and not totally fair to me that's all well, i think on this side just to kind of close the loop on this tonight I can't, I'm maybe, sorry, I can't hear you. On, on this item, maybe for for tonight to close the loop on it, maybe we um, we say that, um, Darren, maybe you could talk to um, the state historic preservation office and see, you know, so we're not reinventing the wheel. I mean, I'm sure there are other historic district commissions that have some language mm -hmm. that's approved that would maybe be it's something for us to look at in draft form. And then mm -hmm. we could get back to Adam's question as to what to do with a specific item so that we can uh, wrap up for the night. I have all that language. I have too. all that language too. That's a, that's a good idea. I just, you know, I just be careful on us, you know, all of a sudden getting into the enforcement business. Enforcement that you mean in terms of just putting a lien on the property? And, and on the issuing property fines? And no, no, I don't mean that. I that's all that's all well and good. Oh, I'm just saying, just, you know, just, yeah. follow, you know, like yeah. what Darren was saying, other people, yeah, other place, uh, departments mm -hmm. or commissions, they go and they inspect it and get sign offs. I, I just, I'm not sure we want to be in the in that enforcement business. It sounds like more work for the chairman, like more work. to be honest. For what? Oh, no, <laughs> most of the other places, the enforcement <laughs> is in PNZ. So the HDC oh, inspection lets PNZ know that this didn't that this didn't hit code. So then the violation comes from a different department. It's not actually HDC. But this is that's conversation for another time. Yeah. Okay, guys, it's getting late. I'll, I'll go a long meeting. <laughs> So, um, maybe we can get a motion to adjourn so I can go out to some dinner. I'll make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> I'll second it. Second. Ten seconds. All in favor? Good night. Okay.